Green Wave of New Orleans, and we're at the Superdome for college football. Hello again, everybody. Sam Smith, the log with Stan Luter today as we bring you all of the play-by-play -play excitement of a long-awaited rivalry. Backyard friendships now turn to backyard rivalries. 60 players from the New Orleans area on these two teams, and they are fired up and ready to go. And I'm fired up and ready to go, too. I mean, this is a Bayou battle at its best. How do you like that? These two coaches have kind of drawn the lines in the sand. Let's go to our four keys to the game. Let's start off with the visitors from Southern University. I'll tell you what. Southern University is one of those teams you really enjoy watching play, but they've got to do a couple of things. They've got to control their emotions. They've been in the dome before, and they've had success. Play calm, play poise. And then they've got to find a way to contain Ramsey. In three games already this season, they've sacked the quarterback six times. They want to flush Ramsey out of the pocket and put pressure on him. For Tulane, they've got to win the battle of turnovers. The wide open offense sometimes forces turnovers. They can't throw interceptions. They can't put the ball on the ground. They're a minus two in the turnover ratio, and they've got to stop big plays. In three games, Southern University's had four touchdowns of over 50 yards. That cannot happen today. Well, it'll be a couple All-Americans kicking for Tulane. Their special team's very good. A little suspect on the other side for Southern. But two outstanding quarterbacks are ready to battle. Our Budweiser ones to watch. Let's start with Terrence Lee. Levy of Southern. Terrence Levy's a coach's son. He's a kid that's got tremendous arm, but he's got great poise. Pete Richardson said he's gotten better every game, every day. He's going to have to have a big game to beat the Green Wave. I like Terrence Levy. He can run and he can also throw. But you're talking about passing. None better than the man, Patrick Ramsey of Tulane University. He's already thrown for over 7,000 yards in his career. He's breaking so many records, I don't have time to tell you them all. But here's the thing you need to know about Patrick Ramsey. He's tough and he's come to play. He only needs four uh, completions to become the all-time completion leader in the history of Tulane 108 years of college football. That tells you something about his credentials. We'll meet the starters and get ready to kick off for the Big Easy Classic as Pete Richardson gets ready to bring his Southern Jaguars against the Green Wave of Tulane. We're back after this timeout. Major Black College Football on NBC is brought to you by your local Ford dealer. Proud sponsor of exciting Black College Football and the family of historically black colleges and universities. By 1-800-CALL-ATT. 1-800-CALL-ATT for collect calls. By Coca-Cola. Life tastes good. By Food Lion. Extra low prices made extra easy. By Reebok. Defy convention. And by Bud Light. For that great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. Well, a crowd of estimated nearly 40,000 getting ready to file in. Ro Brown has watched these youngsters grow up as high school youngsters. Now, Collegian is our third man of the broadcast from New Orleans. Ro Brown, nice to have you today. Thanks a lot, Sam. You know, we got a couple of Louisiana riflemen, these quarterbacks you talked about so eloquently, and Patrick Ramsey and Terrence Levy. But you know what? It may come down to the guys who can move the ball on the ground best. The team that can do that most effectively may end up winning the game. Enough about the labels, one double A, one single A. About financial statements, social statements. It's time to play some football now, so let's get with it. Back to you, Sam and Stan. Thank you, Ro Brown. Look forward to your comments down on the field before we get ready for this one today. There's Pete Richardson. What a marvelous career he's had so far at Southern. He is 9-1 and one in this building, by the way. Having lost only one game here, he lost to Jackson State last year, and of course his number's very impressive as he's won over 109. Other side looking for his first win this year, Chris Selfo in his third year, and of course He's 10-17 as he comes to the game today. But he all this week has said, hey, our team has certainly improved, and that's where we've got to be. Well, the excitement of one double-A return football is Ezra Landry. He's only 5'7", 160 from right here in New Orleans. And he gets his hands on the football, which he will now as Tulane kicks off. He has something to say about it, and it is Marler kicking off, and it does go to Landry at the one. A fumble. Gets away from one tackler, but will not uh, get away from the entire green wave. And down he goes at the five, really spoiling that momentum for Landry, who wanted to get upfield, and upfield in a hurry. Number 83 was Carl Davis, was down there quickly to make the stop for the green wave. For Southern University, they'll be led on the field by Terrence Levy. Levy, an outstanding quarterback. His coach, Pete Richardson, said he's matured, more confident, and the players really believe him. Got some great numbers here, Stan. He needs to get a good drive early. Nice drive early. Get him started. Get some momentum for Southern. 
And quickly out of the shotgun, rolls into the end zone. And that'll be short of the intended receiver on the far side. Batted up in the air and off the turf. And incomplete. Throwing out on that right-hand corner for Alfred Orr. There is the four starting lineups, the backs and the receivers. Jeremy Williams with 120 yards last week, while Lewis comes in playing the top three receivers. Sims a tight end. They don't use him a lot. The down linemen are good ones, including Gary Jenkins. Jenkins has now had to slide over to left guard. He was an all-conference left, uh, excuse me, to tackle. He was an all-conference left guard last year. On the end around. They've got a man in the open of the outfield, and it goes all the way to the far side, and stumbling his way, and finally falling out of bounds as a little razzle-dazzle goes on here for Southern, and Lewis gets in the open field as he runs it up for first down. Gets he play the call, second play of the ball game, into Shannon of your own end zone to run it reverse, and had Lewis been able to keep his balance, I think it would have been a bigger play than it was. The Ford starting lineups defensively for Lane. There you see the linebackers, now the defensive linemen, and Selvin, of course, has started all of the games since he's arrived here at Tulane. And the secondary, they are dandies. And they may be called on as Levy has got a pretty good cannon, and he's back to throw. Runs out of the pocket, but will not get away as he's going to be down. And there is also a flag as he's dropped at the 17-yard line. Good defensive play coming up is Kenyon Blackman. Blackman from Tallahassee, Florida, 6'5", 250, and a junior on the play. The referee handling the action today is Randy Sims. Umpires Roy Ellison, Richard Taylor's our linesman. Line judge is Wayne Winkler. Bob Jamison is the field judge. Side judge is Rodney Shows, and the back Holding judge is Keith Frazier. Offense. Penalties decline. Second down. So they'll rub out the penalty, bring up the second down because it is a loss back to the 17. Coach Selfo and his conversations off and on this week had indicated that they saw great improvement in the Central Florida game despite the tough loss they had here at the Dome last week. Controversial call ends that ball game for them, but they held their poise and they looked like tonight could be the game they won again. One thing they try to do with Southern is they swing this out to Lewis is pull a lot of hitch passes. That means get it in the hands of their skilled, very, very talented athletes, and Lewis is one of the best. You're going to get a situation saying where it's going to be a lot of one-on-one -on -one coverage, and Lewis is one of those quick receivers as along with R and then Kentry playing and then Jobert and they're going to try to get the ball isolate on him get the ball in the hands five yards and then let them do some damage Levy is back there by himself there's two receivers to the left three to the right as they spread the field let's see if they can get away he fumbles he's going to have to run and he will out of trouble not enough or did he get enough for a first down as Levy may have made something out of something else that was going to be very bad that is the shell of a great athlete with great foot speed here in Levy. Trying to do something to snap just a little bit off, and Levy bobbles it, changing hand, but the ball's a good bounce on AstroTurf, and I think he may have stretched it just enough, Sam, for the first down. Terry Fontenot was the first man for Tulane, was back there to force him to run it up the middle. And they did make another first down by just the length of the football. What a play by Levy. First and ten for the Jags, he's throwing again. Under his intercept, near side is L. Page. Lenares, L. Page is on his way, finally drug down from behind, down at the 25-yard line. So Levy tried to swing it out, and L. Page steps in front and drops it up for the interception. And it's it ahead as the young man from Carver High in New Orleans gives the green wave a first and ten at the 24. You can see pressure that time by Tulane, a little half roll that time by Levy. Levy rolls right, doesn't read coverage. L. Page right where he needed to be, catches the ball, puts Tulane in great territory, their first possession. L. Page called by the coaches, one of the better corners they've seen play here at Tulane, and for that matter in the Conference USA, and there's our first look at Ramsey. Four completions have become the all-time leader all-time here at Tulane. They give it off to the first back through, and that's going to be Moore. And Moore, of course, who had a great game uh, last week, is continuing to get eight 100-yard-plus games in his career, playing only his 15th game. Why, you might ask? Well, he's got a good quarterback to kind of keep the pressure off of him. Got some good receivers, but these guys up front are the real reason. Swole is starting his uh, 26 consecutive games, started since the freshman, and was on the undefeated team here a couple of years ago. Ramsey out of the shotgun, over the middle. It's intercepted, knocked down. Oh, that came very close to going in the hands as a good defensive play by Arnold. Arnold coming strong from that uh, corner spot and almost came up with an intercept on him. 
Part of the game plan for Southern is to put pressure, no pressure that time on Ramsey. Could find it. Arnold does a great job of closing that time. Had that interception, didn't hold on to it, but sets up that third down situation. Watch for a blitz package out of Southern. Carl Davis late signing. Yeah, Algiers, Louisiana was the man it was intended for. They come back to the near side and they come right back to Davis. And Davis is taken right out of his shoe as he's short of the first down. Very short, uh, not very long before he needs to get it. There's the defense, Davis, Ford, Blatcher, and the rest of Landry's a dandy. There's their linebackers. And look at those two corners. They are dandies. Arnold and Williams, Hartford, Hartman, excuse me, and Jacardi Williams, who was a corner move to the safety spot. It is and short. Ramsey just muscles his way ahead, and Tulane has a first at about the 12-yard line. Well, you go right behind Corey Tully. Tully, their starting center, now in his senior year, 6'1", 272, at a Harvey Archbishop uh, Shaw High School. And a good one here. And a first down for Tulane. Again, they'll spot it inside 12, about the 11. Out of the shotgun to Ramsey, getting a call from the near sideline. Offensive coordinator is Frank Selfo, the brother of Chris, the head coach. Didn't like what he saw on that eight minute of the box. Makes a handoff, back to throw, looking in the end zone, covered and smothered down at the 16 yard line. There's Hartman, one of the guys coming strong from the strong safety spot, was in on top of it to make the stop initially for Southern. Slow and developing, there's the play fake, but the linebackers, everybody's coming hard. Hartman comes on the wing, the seventh sack this season for the Southern Jaguars. They're going to put pressure on Ramsey. If Ramsey can get away, he does it this time, but if he can, he can have success. Defense is strong for Southern. Loss of five, second down 15, Ramsey. This time a little inside handoff, and they get it quickly to Moore. But well, D. Moore takes it down inside the 10, out around the nine yard line. Tim, one thing that Southern's defense, you know they're going to be very aggressive, but they're going to have to also stay at home and cover lanes. That time they're going to run the draw. The play actually is a little bigger than it could have been. Watch, there's a delay, and then Moore's able to pick out his spot. Almost breaks that good defense that time by Southern. Again, it sets up those short yard situations. Back to action, and there's a little fade pattern in the end zone by Ramsey. It was actually knocked out of bounds to the far sideline, and the defensive play on the far side by Benny Williams, who had two interceptions last week and a win over Alabama State. One for a 66-yard touchdown run was the only man that had a chance to catch that from Ramsey. Big play, Lenny Williams. Well, one of the strengths of this two-lane club has to be coming on to the field right now, Seth Marler. Marler is five for five in field goals so far this year, and he is acting automatic here. They'll spot it down for 15 to 25-yard field goal to try. At the interception by L. Page, Delane Prince to take an early 3-0 lead, and Marla has it up, and it is good. So the 25-yard field goal try is good by Tulane, and they take an early 3-0 lead, as will be some getting the football back after the kickoff. The Big Easy Classic at the Superdome in New Orleans. Glad you can join us. We'll see you elsewhere. Back in a moment. 199 rush delivery available. You know, every college has its uh, coach, which is a standard. Of course, in Alabama, it's people like Bear Bryant, Notre Dame, I guess it's Newt Rockney. At Southern, it was Ace Mumford. He was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame this past summer. These times, under that man, Pete Richardson, the best time that Southern's had since Ace Mumford. 67-17 record. This game against a 1A opponent is a case of respect. Back to you up in the booth, guys. Bro, I couldn't agree more as they call the coach. And that's affectionate for what he's done. As Marler's kick, feel it by Landry in the end zone, and he says, nope, let's get it out to the 20, as he saw a lot of little green wave coming at him. Rose talking about the success of Pete Richardson. You look at the numbers, three times he's had 11 wins, eight years he's coached, he's only had, he's never had a losing season. So he's doing something right down in Baton Rouge. Well, Tulane gets three points on Marler's 25-yard field goal, eight plays. 16 yards after L. Page's interception, took 238 to get it done. And Southern, with their second possession, will get it at their own 20-yard line. Let's see if Southern will settle down a little bit this time. We had the, the bots kick off. They dropped the ball, and also the fumble snap. Let's see if they'll settle down and play a little better now. Inside handoff as they try to get Williams with some running room. Jeremy Williams out of Baton Rouge. Livonia High School came in with 165 rushing yards. 
120 of that came last week against Alabama State, so he may just be getting cranked up here. Guys, yeah, it's very tough inside. I tell you, I know that Pete wants to establish the pass and get Levy going, but they feel like to win the game, they must run the football. Got to take the heat off is to lay in, of course, defense improving, even though right now yardage given up. It is the worst in Division One in the country. And they get it to Lewis again, and he is whammed down at the 27. They may give him forward progress to the 30, though, which may be just enough for a first down. Pinned on the spot. Looks like he may have gotten the first down. Linesman has a foot outside the 30. And as they walk it down, now it's a first down. Expect quick plays like that. The quick Ouch. slant. Wow, was he met right there in the second effort? That time pushed back, but I think they're giving him first down. And I thought that hit way up here. <laughs> So again, it is a first down here by Southern as they move the ball up to beyond their own 30-yard line. Levy again has worked out of the shotgun since the start of the offense in the first and now the second series. Comfortable back there as he backpedals inside his 20. Have to throw to get that one away, throwing the loose. That was an uncatchable ball if there was any kind of contact up the sideline. And that's the official just throwing a hat where the foul would have been uh, initiated had it been called at that point. Well, Sam, I also think he threw that. I think that was the lineman there that threw, the, threw his hat. The indicate also where that Lewis stepped out of bounds. Yep. I think he stepped out and then came back in. So had he caught the ball, it would have been an ineligible pass anyway. So again, as the incomplete pass drops it down to a second down and 10 now here for Southern University, a club coming in averaging. 329.7 yards per game. They've had eight make it nine interceptions out for the year in game number four today. There's that little look in pass again as they continue to try to work for it. That time it's still there. Has it at the 35 yard line. The defense on the outside. Jeff Sanchez makes the stop. Or two lane. Good corners here. Sanchez along with El Page. You've already seen him. The two deep guys. Bulger actually is kind of like a linebacker. He plays. And Mitchell, the strong safety, is all over the field. Yeah, very quick. And the thing about Sanchez, he's a two-sport guy. Can play on the offensive field. A two-side guy. Offense and the defense. Love his closing speed. Levy back with a third down play. Getting it to Lewis. And he was hit just as he got hold of the football. And that was Daniel Neville. The middle linebacker that gives him a whack just as the ball got to it. Again, we talked about quick three-step drops. Look one way, throw the other. There's a slant right right there. Neville catches mm. it. Doesn't matter. He didn't catch the ball. I just want to deliver a blow. I said, yeah, it's me. It's me. From Archbishop Shaw High School right here in New Orleans, Daniel Neville. He's on board 6 one, two, 13 delivers the blow. This is Villagrana with a nice-looking kick out of there. That may have been a little suspect area of their game. Coming to the game, this L Page trying to get away from uh, the tacklers, but finally down at the 25-yard line after the kick. And a kick of 40 yards with a minus one on the return. So it'll be too late with their second possession after Southern really getting an excellent uh, kick out of there to make things kind of turn around and go the other way. Now Tulane's got a long bit of green ahead of them. However, they've got the lead three to nothing in our big classic back after this message. Stantin at their own 25, pitching it outside. Morelli Moore tries to turn the corner. And a good defensive play on the far side will not let that happen as that time Southern, who, according to Coach Pete Richardson, in their 32-7 win, Lenny Williams making the stop there, probably played the best of the defense that they played all year and certainly reminiscent, as you pointed out, back to their good days in defense. Oh, back to the dog day. They call them dog day defense. That time a good hit by Lenny Williams. Look at Patrick Ramsey from Ruston, Louisiana, and he's not going to go anywhere. As that left tackle let him get loose and storming in to make the defensive stop that time as they roll over is Joshua Davis. Big Joshua Davis goes about 237. Very quick. Comes in there. Nobody gets him. He lays a lead on Ramsey. Nice little stunt that time as Chapman, the linebacker, stunned into the outside. And let Davis just slip inside for the big sack. Second sack of the season for Davis. Third down now. They need 20 during wave with seven and a half to go. In the first of the easy as the Green Wave leads three to nothing. There, that little inside hand drop is a more. We get a majority of that loss back. He gains nine, but it's going to be a third down and 11. Well, this kid's got some great footwork as well. From Baton Rouge, a uh, guy that maybe has a little something to prove here. And the Southern fans are up as now it's going to force the fourth play and get time for Tulane. Much better defensive set that time for, for Southern. Tulane a little conservative. Again, not wanting to make a turnover to put Southern back in his football game. Watch this kick. This is Roussel averaging 46 per game. 
and one of the better kickers in the country, kicking to Landry. He stands back at his already five. He drives one long. Landry should have a little room to run with this one, and he does. And the little guy just dives forward ahead as a flag apparently is going to be down as Landry goes diving back into their territory, and it goes with a nice run back as Landry again takes it after a 39-yard kick, 17 yards on the return. But again, they'll wait for the decision on the flag back up field. I think this may block in the back against Sutton. Randy Sims, our referee, the discussion. By the way, for many of you watching on our network today, don't forget October the 13th. We have got a great one coming your way. SIAC, two powerhouses, Tuskegee, the Black College Football Champions of a year ago, going up against Morehouse 66 times. They will have played after the game coming on October the 13th. 6.30 pregame, 7 o'clock kickoff, even time on the 13th of October. On the receiving team, post scrimmage kick enforcement, 10-yard penalty, first down. Hold it on the run back. Indeed. You uh, on TV hear the uh, referee. We're not afforded totally of hearing them here in the booth. But again, it did appear it was holding call, and back it goes to the 44. So nonetheless, it is a good field position here out of the shadow of their end zone by Southern on the third possession of the day. And Levy out of the shotgun again to try to give that a little bit more leverage on room as he gives it off. Slant at the outside to Williams. Jeremy stepping up to about the 49-yard line. Uh, roughly about four or five yards. Give him five on the play. The moving night back to the 49. Jeremy Williams, quick feet. One of four Williams. We're going to get into this what's in the name thing later on in the game. But one of about four Williams on this football team. A kid coming in the game, like I said, 165 yards on 54 carries. And again, a guy that's got to have a big game today. Second down. They caught it five to go. Levy back early. Line gives. He moves to the pocket. They throw it complete. Down to the 40-yard line. The fumble. It's on the ground. Big stack up there. Referees in on top of it in hurry as I believe Lewis intended receiver. Tulane indicates they've got it and they do. The same you could see that great patience by Levy on the toss. Lewis open. You've got to sometimes know when to go down. Levy feels it comfortable, makes a very good pass. Lewis hands the ball out there just too long. Comes in behind. We'll see it in a minute. Gets hit and fumble. And again, the second turnover the afternoon early in this game for them. Levy's got chances to look. No pressure by Tulane. A good block there. And puts the ball right on the money. Now, Lewis has got to know somebody's behind him. Keep that ball inside. Just a little bit loose. Sanchez, we talked about it earlier. Watch Sanchez come up and make the pop right there. And the ball pops out, and I think it's a go. Yes, it is to the Greenies. By the way, uh, Patrick Tyson, the center for Southern, was also close to making that recovery, but he does not. And Tulane gets the second turnover of the day as they give it a moment. A flag is down as he's to the outside. Tripped up after he turned the corner. The referee is bringing this one back to the line of scrimmage. That was an interesting stat I saw on the green wave, though, that their penalties, they're averaging only roughly 29 yards in penalties right. per game, only 18 for the entire year. This is game number five. Yeah, I think they're number two in the Hall of Conference USA in fewest penalties. So back it goes to the 35-yard line. Substitution in on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. So we apparently had uh, a player come on to the football field. And again, uh, illegal as far as a substitution is concerned. And Tulane got caught just as they snapped at football. Ramsey that will back it up for a first and 15. You got three wides to the left, so that means they're going to be in man coverage. You can't give up anything. Deep slant patterns are also tough to defend. Ramsey throwing that little swing to the outside and gets it out of bounds just shy of about the 40-yard line. As he swings it outside to Roy Dale Williams, an outstanding baseball player, now getting his 28th pass of the year for over 340 yards. And you saw them try to get that skill and talent on the outside free. There's the numbers on Roy Dale. Ramsey again, they'll throw 50 passes in a game, just shy of a first down. They spot it at the 45, and they do. As another bullet pass thrown right away that time, and they're throwing this one to Harris. And it's going to be a third down and short as Tulane. No huddle comes right to the line of scrimmage. And here comes the quarterback. 
And when you're as big as he is, 234 pounds, why not? Makes it easy, and it feels really spring. All he's got to do is just pick his hole. Sam, I was watching the moment go to play clock. As soon as the ball was hit, it took him two and a half seconds to get the playoff. Tulane wastes very little time. Play called it. Huddle here. This 25. Clock's in play. 24, 23, 22. You can make me out a liar this time. I'm talking about you. Ramsey now is all mobilizing at the line of scrimmage. Stack running backs behind him. Fullback is Coleman. The running back is more. Ramsey going for broke. Up the near sideline. Just out of the outstretched hands of Williams. As it was a foot race up the side of the field. And Arnold was, and it was there. That one was just a tad too long. And incomplete. Rodale Williams and Terrence Arnold are locked up in main coverage. It wasn't a lot to do. You just got to make certain he doesn't get the ball. Bump him a little bit to the sideline. One on one. A nice pass. Nice coverage that time. Southern. It was interesting to watch both teams prepare for the no huddle on either side as far as their defensive calls are concerned. You have to be kind of one play ahead. Ramsey, underneath pass, gets this one ahead. Comes down to about the 42-yard line. The ball was momentarily dropped. James Dunn was the receiver out of Santa Monica, California. Ramsey, with that 647th career completion, now has a Tulsa record, or excuse me, a two-lane record. And Sean King at 646. And when you're talking about passing one of the best, he certainly did in King. So Ramsey now is the all-time completion record holder here at Tulane. Our stat assistant today, Lenny Van Gelder, giving the notes. As here's the swing pass out to Moore. Oh, gets away from one tackler. Still on his move. Spins his way down to the 30-yard line. And that is an athletic effort by an outstanding back. And Moore carries it down deep into Southern Territory. Swing pass, simple handoff. Just take the turn, make the pass to Moore. Moore in the field should have been hit right there, but missed the tackle. You know, Cooper's mad at himself. And then the great athletic ability cut him back against the grain by Noel Moore. By the way, they throw to as many as 11 receivers in the game. One of those happens to be Moore, who catches it with great regularity, the third best receiver on the team right now. You can see why he makes something happen after they get Ramsey out of the shotgun. Hands it off inside to Moore, the slant to the outside. They kind of wishbone him down as he's taken down on the far side and dropped there with another nice game to get it out to... Let's see where they finally spot the football. Now. And they'll get it down into about the 27-yard line. Three out of the four games Tulane's played this season, Sam, the opponent scored first. This time Tulane scores on the field goal. They're looking for more. This is a good start for the Green Wave. We may mention he throws to a lot of people, does Ramsey. He's throwing five passes to five different receivers. And this one is incomplete at the goal line. Boy, that was a jump ball. And Dunn was back there. Arnold was the man that was with him on the goal line. And that was really anybody's ball when that be because Ramsey put some air under it. Arnold's made two sub defensive plays. One where he brackets the guy out of bounds. This time He's coming back, looking over the other shoulder, and gets right in between the receiver and the ball to break that play up. And the big question there is, was there contact on either side? No. Both players going for the football. Big no ball there. Ramsey rolls out, swings it near side. Incomplete at the 20-yard line. Trying to hit down a little cross pattern again. One of the few times in this drive, or in any drive for Tulane today, they tried to roll sprint, sprint Ramsey out at the time, avoid pressure, ball just off the fingertips. This is like almost automatic here. As they'll bring out their field goal kicking uh, team, and of course Marla will come out. Seth Mahler, so far this year, he's 14 for 14, by the way, inside the 30-yard line, and of course add one today. This is a 44-yard tie. Roussel will hold. The snap, the kick, gets on its way, plenty of it. And it's... 44-yard field goal. That's got to make a cash. coach feel a little better. When the offense bogs down getting sixes, you just keep adding threes. And Maulers had two of them as Tulane leads it six to nothing. For this kick as they will get it back near their goal line. As Byron Miner standing back, there's a good look at Marler. Three field goals last week against Central Florida. Two already this week. As he has his green wave and six to nothing, he kicks off Landry in the end zone. And they are encouraging him to stay right there, and he does. So out to the 20, will come the Jaguars again as they'll take it first down. And 10 at their own 20-yard line. 
Well, Marler, who had a 53-yard field goal against uh, Stan Luter's alma mater, East Carolina, <laughs> Yeah, but he's the one won the game. <laughs> That's right. That, by the way, time record of Tony Wood set back 1984 against Kentucky here at Tulane. 53-yard field goal by Marler earlier this year. He's really got a leg. When you've got a great kicking game, that can give you a lot of advantages. I saw him last weekend, Winston-Salem State, Virginia Union, 18 points given up on the special teams, three block punts. Two turnovers by seven. Southern has got them with a goose egg on the uh, scoreboard so far. Hickey with an inside hand to the first back group, trying to get it ahead. Williams running down the inside. And they carried it out for three or four years. Our yards, me, and now they get it back out there again. It's going to be Carl Singleton, excuse me. As Singleton was one of the backup backs behind Williams. Antonio Williams was the other, but uh, Singleton slips in for his first carry of the day. Southern's had success moving the football, but they've had two turnovers. I'm surprised to see them. What they're going to slow down the tempo just a little bit, get some poise, and put together the drive. Here is Evie back with all of the receiver in the backfield. Levy steps up and after one minute, he's got some room. He'll dive it out to the 47 yard line, first and 10 of the Jaguar fans. After a 25 yard run by Levy, maybe knocked silly by his own lineman, Gary Jacobs, is whacking him on the but a great athletic move by Levy. Sam, we talked about it a moment ago with Ramsey rolling out the ability of Levy to be able to run the football sometimes on call play. This time he's scrambling, picks up big yard just because of his legs. He's a tremendous athlete, sees the whole field. Good play by Levy. By the way, Tulane took 10 plays on their last drive at 37 after getting that uh, turnover by Southern. And now Southern trying to use some quick kicks here as they run out of the stack die for the first time. Levy Ivers coming out of it, going out of it. A big battle. Lewis has got it down at the 17-yard line. Yes, this is what I know. It's one-on-one against Sanchez. Try it's plain. Plain, plain, yeah. They got so many guys coming in, Sam. You, you got to look quick. Playing again, making the reception. I'd called it Lewis. It was Ken Trapline, the young man from Baton Rouge, who makes a big play. And now it's first and 10 Southern at the Tulane. They move it to the 16-yard line. His 11th reception of the season. Levy back to the more traditional one running back behind him. They were out of the stack. I didn't like what he saw. And we'll take a timeout. The first call by either team here in the first quarter of the game. Levy trotting to the sideline now as they play a Division I-A school for the very first time. And, of course, Tulane has already played a 1-double-A school. They beat both William and Mary, by the way, yeah. that day. <laughs> and that's the only other team they played in the 1-double-A uh, settings. And came out with that win. Let's take another look at that great play. Plain on the end is fine. Levy pass. Kentrell playing goes about 6 feet 1. Jeff Sanchez, if I can, but Sanchez never turns around. Ball, ball put right there. Plain comes back to catch the pass. Dives, gets it, puts it in great position. Kentrell playing, one of the top receivers. Yeah, it's very understandable to think about. Uh, Levy because Levy and Lewis have been the combination, but playing 10 receptions for over 2 yards, a kid that's a good athlete, he can do it too. He did on that play. Made a good point that Sanchez really never came back for what it would have been about a 6 one and a half against about 5-11 jump ball, and he even come back after it is the down lineman for Tulane trying to dig in up front. That's Lonnie Creighton digging in. A minute 23 to go in the first quarter and a 6 nothing Tulane lead. It's tough to score inside the red zone. Let's see what Southern will do. Run the ball some Try to go with sprint options a little. Big, easy, classic, anything but easy for both of these clubs right now as it's only a 6-0 lead by Tulane. But the Jaguars are threatening as they've got it at the 16 of the wave. Jill Bear comes in motion out of the shotgun leading. He looks at the work that way. Up for the touchdown. It is! They throw it to Williams out of the backfield for a score by Southern. the Jaguars crack the scoreboard. Sam, this team's got a lot of weapons. That time you see motion one way, roll to the right, throw back to the left, and a nice catch by Jeremy Williams, who's had seven receptions going into this football game. He gets the eighth, a big eighth. It puts Tulane in the driver's seat. They thought, no, no, Southern's about to take the lead. They also came 80 yards to score as a kick after. Bill will try to put it through. It's up, and it is good. 
Buck Hagee left to go in the first quarter. A 7-6 lead by Southern. Big play. It's the middle of there. The big run by Levy. Then the pass going to Plain and now throwing the little swing pass out of the backfield to Williams for the score. There's a little fake. You go motion one way, throw back the other way. One-on-one, -on -one, the ball perfectly thrown. You couldn't have thrown the ball any better on the Australian end of Neville. Touchdown. There's motion. Then watch him just out of the backfield. Nobody bumps him. He says, it's coming to me. There's a perfect pass. Six points for the Jags. You know, Neville was looking for something inside. Never got out wide enough. You may recall he made a big defensive play earlier in the game, but time got duped to staying inside and Peterson's club now taking a 7-6 to six lead. But it all started because of motion. They go motion one way, all the secondary rolls that way, and the ability to leave you to run. We saw a few moments ago, his leg and his arm run one way, throw the other, touchdown. Well, we mentioned they went a yard, took them only four plays, Dad, took them only a minute 36 to do so. <laughs> So it doesn't take long as now Southern will kick off for the first time today. And they'll be kicking deep to Tulane. Some dangerous uh, return people back for them. El Page, who has the intercept a moment ago. Long Sanchez are both back near the goal line. So it's two deep men waiting to kick here. Granite. We were watching him in practice yesterday. He does not kick it all that deep. So this could be a, a rather short return here unless he really gets a toe into this one. Had a nice putt earlier. He handles both of the chores. Four seven. He approaches and kicks it. He does drive it pretty well. Extremely well. And it's He's got open field. Bumps into his own man. Still on his feet. And finally dropped out at the 49 yard line. Only the kicker, Bill Agrana, had a chance to catch him until one of his own men came behind and bumped him and gave Southern a chance to catch up. Well, give Bill Agrana an assist on the tackle. Nice kick down to the goal line. And then there was the big hole. And Sanchez looking up. Watch Bill Agrana. He slows him down. Sanchez not patient reading his block. And the safety tackle comes up there for Southern. Chris Coleman, the one blocking out in front of him, number 38. What says there he put in, and they got to detain and then got the backside uh, Jaguar. Give him a assist. Give him a great assist. Nice kick also. And off, they'll try to go up the middle, and they muscle that time. They try to get some wedging room there for Tulane, giving it to the big fullback, Cullen. And he'll wedge out for maybe a yard. Well, they almost didn't get the chance set before they snapped that. That's how quick Tulane comes up and goes at you. You know, scouts have been all over this uh, area watching Tulane. Of course, Ramsey. Ramsey is here out of Ruston, Louisiana. Like another guy by the name of Bradshaw came out there. Oh, yeah. Burt Jones, Bradshaw, guys can throw it. <laughs> There's that little swing pass they got in the open hand, and there it goes. Williams, touchdown, Tulane. 50 yard touchdown strike by Ramsey. And he did it all, just got in the hands of the talented folks, and he gets it in. They're warming up right now, I think. <laughs> that, by the way, continues the longest current TV, uh, excuse me, TD pass per game. And second, now 26 straight games for Tulane's Ramsey, and it looks like they're going to go for two. They've got a lead, 12 to 7. They want to try to go to two to get this into the touchdown situation that the uh, Southern has to have it. And Ramsey again throwing the 50-yard touchdown strike, again getting it in the hands of the people they want to, and that time Roy Dale Williams does the rest for 50. 26 straight games of throwing a touchdown pass in every one of the games. Williams, there was a lot of room in the corner of that end zone, but Williams took advantage of whatever it was the last two feet. And Chris Selfo looking for his first win this year for Tulane. Sees his green wave after going down 7-6. to six, Back on a 50-yard touchdown pass to Williams. And then Ramsey hits him also for the two on the extra point. So an eight-point play by the Green Way makes them a 14-7 leader. As we close in, 25 seconds to the end of the first quarter. Three-step drop, look right, throw left, just a little quick inside hitch, and then Will just, he just does the rest. There's not a lot to talk about. Rodale just takes it to the house. Not exactly sure what Rodale's speed is, but it's got to be pretty close to about a 4-4. I'll tell you that for sure. And again, look out, look at the corner of the end zone. There's not a lot of room there, folks. And a great catch by Williams as that time they isolated a linebacker out there, but not a prayer getting him out to knock that one away. 
So as Tulane takes the seven-point lead, they get prepared with Marler getting ready to kick up to Pete Richardson's Jaguars and Landry. Still trying to wait for that little lightning in a bottle here to happen <laughs> yeah. to them. He has a lot of uh, success in running kicks back. Most points given up by the uh, Southern defense in the first quarter. They only given up seven points the whole season. This time, Tulane puts a 14 spot on. I'll tell you what, there's going to be a lot more points scored in this ballgame. Seth Marler drives this deep. Landry, about a yard deep. He's coming out. Oh, he's got the wave in front of him. But he's not going to get too far. He's going to be dragged down. Tulane with Terry Fontenoy getting in front of him. Terry out of Lake Charles, Louisiana. Was the man that led the Giants number 18 down on the special teams. Good job by the Green Wave. Well, they just completely annihilated that little wedge that uh, Southern had to get inside against Landry. You got to get a couple of guys in there to be the wedge busters, and then FB2 is not a lot to do. But again, just coming in there and playing. And both teams are playing with great emotion. They've settled down. They're running their offenses, and this is making it crazy for both defensive coordinators. I played with a guy. His name was Malcolm Felder, and he <laughs> recalled the missile because that's what he did. And the missile was something else. Out of the shotgun comes Levy. 14 seconds to go in the quarter. Inside handoff as they'll get it to the outside. Singleton again splits the outside. Like that Williams. Big flag there. And a flag is down as Williams hit hard at the sideline. Lock is stopped at seven seconds to go in the period. Don't think they threw one, Sam. Well, they looked as if they might want to, but they apparently did not. It's out of bounds, and they'll check it for a first down. Nice call on first down. You're expecting pass after all the excitement of the last two possessions. Come with the little pat, the little draw play to Williams. Williams picks up about 12 for the first. First time ever for Tulane and Southern to meet on a football field, and they're at the Big Easy Classic in New Orleans. You heard from both the athletic directors how proud they are to get this game underway, and they'll play one more time. Schedule for 202. Yeah. Tulane schedule will allow that to happen. They swing it out to Williams again. And Williams will side it in. There's going to be a block in the back, and that one was fairly clear. To the officials on the sideline, and Pete Richardson is not happy about that one. What Pete's really upset about was the fact that I think Jobert is at the one made the block. Jobert was out of the play. The guy had already gone past him when he made the block. Didn't need to do that. Richardson, a graduate of Dayton, they're known as the Flyers. Looked like he was ready to take off there for a few minutes. He had the helicopter arms going anyway. <laughs> well, Pete, you know, was a pretty fair football player oh. at Dayton and with the Buffalo Bills and the, and the old part of the AFL, then the NFL in the 60s and early 70s. In the back on the offense. The penalty is accepted. Time expired during the down. We'll have a one down on time. So again, a penalty here on the final play of the period. So they'll run one play, and the quarter will be history. As they ready line up at the 25, and Levy standing ready for the snap, waiting for a call from the sideline, saying, well, what do you now? They get a first down again. He had the first down, and then on the penalty, steps it back. First and 13. About first and and replay, replay the plates back to a 13. They were short of the first down. Levy waiting for the snap. With this one, this one right up on the draw. And he'll go down, and that's going to do the first quarter. Gets it out to the 33-yard line. So after the first quarter, our Big Easy Classic here at the Louisiana Superdome. Southern University had a 7-6 lead over Tulane, but Ramsey continues to throw and has got his green wave in the lead by 7. Welcome back to the Superdome. Good crowd file again for the Big Easy Classic. Sam Smith, Stan Luter, and Roe Brown. We'll take you down to Roe in just a moment as Southern again takes over the ball as they have started the second period with a second down. And they'll need about four or five for the first down here. As again, Levy is out of the shotgun. Keep in mind they had a blocking in the back penalty. That kind of negated an opportunity for them to move the ball up the field as the chains are being hustled up the line. We're about ready to get back to play here. Terrence Levy out of New Orleans Walker High School. His father coached within the shadow of Tulane University, so he knew him well. They get this one to Plain. Plain will be short first down. They will give him progress to about the 37-yard line, but it's shot out of the yard. And it'll bring up a third down. Let's take a look at our food line first half uh, stats. Excuse me, first quarter stats. And, of course, right now the rushing yards you see belonging to Southern. A passing yards of 90. And, again, the totals. So, again, uh, for 158, 109 so far. Five too late, but the turnover is a big key. Here they swing it, turn it out to Plain. 
And that time, uh, they get it just out of his reach as the defensive cover on the near side was there to knock it away. Brought man up in pressure that time on Terrence. We've made it very hard for him to make that pass. Again, you looked at those stats, and the one thing that really comes to me, the two early turnovers that set up points for Tulane by Southern University. By the way, that 50-yard touchdown pass by Ramsey tied the last pass of the year this year. The kick by Villagrana. I tell you what, this kid's got a head of as well as the catch is made that time by El Page, and they did not give him enough room to catch it on a 40 yard kick. As one of the defenders for Southern went rolling by him, as Villagrano again that gets a great kick of 40 yards earlier. You've got to give the guy the two and a half yard halo. At time, the defender just for Southern runs right past him. Might have been a little iffy call, but that's what's in the rule book two and a half, so you got to give it to him when the ball is caught. El Page standing on fire that time. Put cell phone. Getting a lot of conversation here in Tulane. How important will this game be? And he said, what game is important? Of course, the big question is, he'd gone 0-4 in the first four. Was there a possibility of losing to Southern at one double-A school? And how would that uh, go to his coaching? Kicking team. Five-yard penalty. First down. So the five-yard step off. We'll move it out to the 29-yard line. And we weren't trying to, of course, put any kind of under pressure, certainly from our standpoint, on Coach Selfo. But you got to admit, an 0-4 start for the year playing a one-double-A school. They really need a good game today. Yeah, and you can say what you want. The bottom line is you don't want to lose at home. Either. That's right. And so you talk about any other thing at the bottom line, you got to win your games at home. And they are 0-2 in the Dome so far this year. All right, Lindsay brings his club back out. Patrick, who already has a night going already and continues that current consecutive touchdown swing back and he's going to be dropped for a big loss great play coming from the outside line at his spot and in comes Joshua Davis for his second sack of the day I was about to say that the Tulane offensive line's done a good job so far protecting Ramsey and Southern's not getting the pressure they like and just before I can say it Joshua Ooh. Davis combusted through with the whipping stick and puts Ramsey to the turf you know what happened there is Davis who just had his ears laid back he said hey I'm not going to take that little play fake and he just <laughs> Keep coming. <laughs> Just keep coming. So a big loss in the play. It's going to be second down and 21. As now the receivers play a little flip block here for Tulane. Williams, the big threat man, on the short side to the bottom of your screen. You see the time winding down to four. Ramsey back in that pocket. He'll this one under pressure. They're throwing it up field. It's going to be a catch. And a flag is down. The catch is going to be made, though. Out of the backfield more. And a man defending back there deep after a 32-yard catch. And it looks as if it is going to be the interference that's going to be refused here by Tulane after a great catch by Moore. Well, D. Moore's a good athlete. 6'198 pounds. You isolate him one-on-one -on -one with the backer. This time against Woods, who's actually a strong safety coming up. The ball's thrown right where it's got to be. You see the interference yep. and the great catch that time. Now, don't forget, Nick. Well, D. Moore is a center Get fielder the in the San Diego. First up. In the Padres organization, you know. So he knows how to catch the football. Go back, catch a baseball. Say, hey, got to catch it. You got Idaho Falls. Yes, got yeah. about 287. Not uh, bad stick. Yeah, not bad at all. Padres could use him this year. Good indeed. He makes a great catch there, squarely at midfield. This is the benchmark. Ramsey hit one from a moment ago to Williams. Let's see what he does with it now on the first ten. 13 and a half to go before halftime. They give it off. Or maybe a little winded, but he does take it under the 45. Let's set chairs to Roe Brown. Roe? Sam Mueldy Moore. Interesting first name. It is Swahili. It means he who gains his strength from God. Mueldy Moore with three 100 yard rushing games out of the first four. An outstanding football player. Versatile. He has lots of strength. It definitely came from God. Back to you guys. Well, divine intervention here by more and he has had himself a heck of an afternoon already. He gets another handoff from Ramsey and here comes Moore again. Can he use that strength as he buckles it inside the 45 down around the 43. Third down three yards to go for the green wave and you know, nowhere in any of our conversations did we ever feel any of the real frustrations by Tulane. Yeah. They had a pass that probably could have very easily been called completion against Central Florida last week. It was denied. They lost the fourth in a row, but they've used the word improvement. And that's what they want to do. That's the key thing. Third down for Jesus. Tulane is only one of five so far today. Showing blitz for Southern now. It's got to be smart and recognized. They're passing around the signals as Coleman and Morgan. Ramsey back, pulling it to the outside, and just out of the outstretched hands of Harris. Terrell Harris just missing that one, and it'll be incomplete. Brings up a fourth down play. 
And Tulane with that 14-7 lead in this ball in this position. Looked as if they might want to go for a fourth down play, but nope, they said no. It's Randy. Has the benefit of looking at the replay on the uh, school board overhead viewer here at the Superdome. He's a little disappointed because that ball was just a tad behind yep. the receiver. Again, a good decision by Tulane. Chris Selfo punt the ball, make it a field position ball game. Roussel will kick the ball. He'll hit it about his own 46 or 7 yard line while Landry more than likely will try to let this one die somewhere. He will try to step away from it. Well, this one's got a towering punt. Landry comes up and wisely makes a fair catch at the 15-yard line. And one of the things Coach Richardson said, I like Landry not only because he can run the ball, but he can catch it. He does there. Southern, after 27-yard kick just for field position by Roussel. Southern takes over as they trail 47 at the Big East Classic in New Orleans. Tulane, Tulane with the lead as Southern's trying to give it off as they try to little end around that time, trying to get Jobert. Quickly spelled out on a great down lineman play that time by Tulane. He spelled that out easily as Blackman. Out of the shotgun trying to get Joe Bear open. We haven't called his name. Very good athlete. Good speed. There's the inside little flip right there, but there's Blackman. Smells the play. Stays at home. Makes the big tackle. He on a defensive play is to play your lanes, and that's exactly what Blackman did. And Bear literally ran back into him. Levy back to the five. He'll run. He's got some running room. May have enough for a first down as he lowers his shoulder and throws his way outside of the 28-yard line. Enough for a first down of two. A play by Levy. The two linebackers and secondary are so concerned with wide receivers, they totally forgot about Levy. Levy's got all day, and you can see, you don't see any green shirts. He's just looking. Now, all of a sudden, he come out of the boom, lays a lick on, it, on Mitchell and picks up the first down. Here's Levy. Levy. We'll be using his first down as Mitchell knows that he can throw deep. He is the free safety and backs deep as Levy gets a snap out of center shotgun. He comes again on the draw. He'll dive in that time to the linebacker, Daniel Neville, who was waiting for him, but did not get him a shot for stat after a nine-yard game. Here's the maturity of Terrence Levy. A year ago, he would have tried to make the play. We talked about Mitchell, how deep he was, 25 yards off the ball. Levy sees there's nowhere to throw the ball on the field, so he tucks it under, runs, picks up nine. Ideal situation, second down and one. You see the American flags on the back of the helmet of all of the NCAA schools. Of course, in honor of our tragic day, September the 11th in New York, Washington and Pennsylvania. Here's the little swing to the outside. First down more. As some will ramble that one down into two-lane territory. As they swing it to the outside with a good catch and run. Makes it very easy. Second down one. Just make the toss. And catch the bus. And, the football, and away you go. That was Alfred R. Rough the foul. Rough the passer. On the defense. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Tulane said, now, Levy, if you're going to run the ball, we're going to make you pay right. for it even when you don't have it. Chris Semple said, I don't like that call. But again, letting the defense is telling the offense, hey, we know you're around. That's a late play. You don't want that. And 15 more onto a big play. Southern's moving. By the way, Alfred Ard was the man that made the catch. Alfred from Kenwood, Louisiana, 5'10", 170, and a red shirt freshman making a good play out of the last pass and then leaving rough by Tulane. And it now sets it up. First and 10 at the 31 yard line. 23 left to go here in the second quarter. The easy classic, the first to what they hope will be many. They're scheduled for at least one more. What a nice crowd here this afternoon would probably ensure some others as they pitch it out to Williams from Levy. Last second pitch and Williams does the rest. But Levy got nailed after he got it out and another flag is down. Watched this develop yesterday and practice they worked on it. Bunch formation, tried on the option and thought they may have run it down at the goal line. Makes the pitch to Williams. Williams picks up yards. I think they're going to add some more to that. Williams indicating something went wrong with him. He may have been in motion. He might have got a little jump on that one. But nonetheless, they'll back it up with a penalty taken here by Tulane after another game by Williams. Holding. Offense. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat first down. To heck with the motion. They'll just take the hold, huh? Yeah, I think that was at the point. And I think, again, the discussion. You know, look at Tulane. Tulane's done a good job. And look at how many points they've given up. Well, 56, 50, 52 points per ball game. Hold this Southern team down. But Southern's hurt themselves. Two turnovers and some costly penalties. And now with the first out and up 19 needed for another first down. Maybe out of that shotgun. A little low snap. He plays it well. 
Guy. Not going to get away, and this time coming strong was Neville, the middle linebacker. It was already playing a little bit in the backfield tackle that time for Southern. Chuck Bern makes the tackle for Danny the Danny Neville got a great jump on the football, and you try to see him, watch him come inside. You want to keep a guy that runs the football inside where you've got pressure, where you've got some help. He doesn't turn the corner, makes the open to tackle. You can see how well Neville closed ground. He could use the speed that they have. So many of the uh, two-lane Greenway players are quarterbacks coming out of high school. Interesting enough. I mean, they're everywhere in this squad. <laughs> quarterbacks, running backs, <laughs> wide receivers have got speed. It's called playing them with either. So it's second down. Roadman. He did 25 for the first time. He'd be back to throw. He's going to throw the Hail Mary to Lewis. Lewis coming back, trying to make the catch, and the flag is down. Lewis was handling to get away from uh, Sanchez on the sideline. And the threes really went and after I, I each other. I wonder what they're, they're going to call. Offensive interference. Yeah. So Lewis is going to get the interference call as he was battling Sanchez on the sideline. Probably will not be a certainly a popular call by Southern, but certainly one well accepted by Tulane in this situation. And what you're going to see will be, I think, Lewis just taking his left hand and pushing Sanchez out of the picture. Get a little more pressure by two lanes up four this time. Levy takes the ball. Watch that. See the little push right there. You can barely see it. He's going for the football. Levy really was popped on the pass, but on the other end, and watch this. Pressure comes from the inside. Steps up. Bam. He gets hit, but he can't see the other side. They almost had the offensive in or the defensive interference, but they call it. I think it's a good call too. So as they discuss where the ball officially will be spotted here, keep in mind the original line of scrimmage. Pass interference. Offense, they'll lose the climb, third down. They'll use it up with a third down, 25, so they just use the down, does Tulane, rather than stepping more off and saving the down for the Jaguars. And another penalty slowing down this racehorse offense, Southern. Nine minutes, three seconds to go before halftime. Guest highlights, stats, and other things coming up at halftime. Hope you'll stick around with us. As Levy now is partner with a third down in 25. Delane coming with only a three-man rush. Levy running to his left. Pulling again for Brooke. This will be really had a plane uh, who had actually kind of broken off the pattern. At that time, he was expected to run a little fly, and he was going to be well covered by El Page. But again, Plain just ran it off, and he didn't have a conversation going on. Yeah, miscommunication, but looking across the middle, Lewis was wide open and was begging for football. I don't know if he had caught it, but he had enough for the first down. But that's where it was intended to go, had to make a change in play over through play. Well, but Legrano wants a kill kick. The ball to El Page, and again, he gets a high kick. It'll be a little short this time. Depends on what kind of kick. It takes a good southern bounce. Now it takes a two-lane bounce, and wisely scooped up and dropped down right there by Richard Grant. Number two for Southern as they kick that one deep, but no return. After 27 yards, they get a break on the roll. So still a seven-point lead by Tulane in the Big Easy Classic. 8.45 left to go before time. A 7-14-7. Seven, seven. They get the ball, giving it off to Moore again. And Moeldy Moore will carry it beyond the 25 out to around the 29-yard line. Well, Moore's had a workmanlike day today, not only running the ball, but catching it out of the field and becomes a dual-purpose threat against Southern here today for Tulane. The ability to catch the ball, as you said, also for Moore to run the football. They want to play, believe it or not, they want to control the football in Tulane, keep Southern defense on the field, and just try to continue to pound and pound. They feel like they've got more depth. You consider Moore's already had 800 plus rushing games and only 15 games being number 15 today. He is going to be well on his way to be one of the all-time rushing history this score. They swing up from Ramsey and that time Rodell Williams, as the old adage goes, dropped his name in the newspaper there, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. That could have been six written all over it. And he just knew that he was trying to make something happen with it, but actually get the hold of the football. One on one with Terrence Arnold, and he just all you got to do, like I said, get your name in the paper. He's got room, he's got separation. Just did not watch it. He was already thinking about what he was going to say to the press after the game. He was also touchdown. thinking Arnold was going to run right up his back pretty soon there too. Second down, and Terrence to go for Ramsey. One of the nation's top passers. They flip it to Moore. Moore's looking for pass, and he well overthrows it. And that time upfield was. 
Well, Harris, the intended receiver, well covered that time by Sutton. Williams was one that was there, and well, actually, both Williams were back. Interesting enough, they have six Williams on the Southern team, and none of them are related to each other. <laughs> They've got six Williams, three Davises, four Greens, one without an E. They've got two Griffins. They've got five Smiths. They've got two Landrys, a Lewis, and some Jacks. <laughs> and none of them related. Oh, my God. Ramsey back with a third and right. Under throws to Williams. I say under throw. The fact that he throws it low. And now Williams, who is being knocked down that time. That is Rodell Williams being knocked down by Lenny Williams, and he apparently got him on the headgear as well for a penalty. You need 11 yards, you get 11. You go down 12, come back. There could have been a little push right there. First down, that's frustration. You don't need that if you're Southern. Lee Williams, a sophomore ball, from Lake Charles. Foul, defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Rodell had already had the knee on the turf, which was stopping the play, and then Lenny Williams finished it off with the personal foul. So now Tulane with a 14-7 lead with just under eight minutes to go in the first half. Frustrating Pete Richardson's fine effort here so far in the first half by the Southern Jaguars. As Tulane now moves back into Southern Territory at the 44. Ramsey and the more. He takes it down to around the 26-yard line. And one of the things about great running backs is the fact they have such great vision, which he does by this big lineman, but also able to use the changing of the balance so well. And Moore, probably one of the better-looking running backs you will find in the country of doing that. He's only a sophomore. When you've got a running back like Moore, you've got to take full advantage of him. 190 yards average last year in all-purpose yards, number two in the Conference USA. You've seen him catch a ball, you've seen him throw a ball, and you've seen him run the ball. Well, De Moore. So as Moore carrying the football well, Southern wants to take a timeout with 7.38 left to go. Moore, of course, as I mentioned, an all-purpose man today. Six yards rushing, 43, receiving the football. And again, looking for his ninth 100-plus rushing game of his career. Pete Richardson, one of the things about Pete, a great defensive back with the Buffalo Bills for four years. He, of course, is assistant at Winston-Salem State in the CIAA before coming to Southern. And, of course, uh, took the head coaching job there at Winston. Had quite a program going on with that Division II club before he got the opportunity to come to Southern. And, of course, used it very well as he was elevated to the head coaching job now as he works very, very successfully and doing the job now in his eighth year for the Jaguars. Pete replaced a great coach at Winston-Salem State, Bill Hayes, who moved down the road to North Carolina a and in addition of winning and continued. Pete, you know, really dedicated. He loves Winston-Salem area. He always tries to get back once or twice a year and, and see the people up there. But he's done a great job. I mentioned earlier, 11 wins. He's had three of them. He's, only, he's never had a losing year in the eight years he's been in Southern. And they've had three black college national champions in only eight years. Pete Richardson, a remarkable man. Well, as Rams gets ready to throw it again, possibly in the Superdome, Sam Smith, Stan Luter, and Roe Brown with you. As we greet you back here at the Superdome, Ramsey and his club first and ten at the Southern 26-yard line. Get to Moore. He gets through the first line, to the second, to the ten, down to the eight line, and finally is tumbled ahead to around the seventh. Man, I tell you, he doesn't have a lot of handles on him either. They can get all of him. Bouncing and using that balance to perfection. Just great blocking that time by the offensive line. There's a big hole where it cuts back against the grain. Several missed tackles, and it takes about three or four Southern guys to bring the Weldy Moore down. He's a man on the up again this time goes to the first back through and that's going to be the fullback Coleman. Coleman carrying it down inside the five. Moore's had a busy afternoon just in this drive alone. Three carries for 47 yards of 10, 18, and 19 yards respectively. One of the reasons is a big fella just got the handoff. Coleman, the uh, fullback that was blocking ahead, and there's another flag that has been thrown on the bottom of the stack. Sam, I'm going to tell you, I, watching Southern work out, watch them come in this ball game, I, the word I thought to describe them was very comfortable. They've been in the dome before. They weren't intimidated. They weren't enough. They really think and thought that they could win this game. It's a long way to go, but I really feel like right now, they're just very frustrated that their performance are not executed. They've had mistakes that they shouldn't make, and, and I think this penalty, if it should be a sports line conduct, is just part of that, that factor that they've had had all game long of this shooting themselves in the foot. Randy Sims, our referee again, the call. That ball, personal foul, defense. 
Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. The second foul. Dead ball. A sportsmanlike conduct on the defense. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Now Pete's also getting on the official because he said, hey, wait a minute now. If my guys are doing something, to be sure Tulane's doing something. You no, know, call it both ways. And I'm sure he's giving that back judge an ear for it, and that's exactly what he's telling. Look, look for both things. Don't let's look for the guys in the white shirts. Look for the guys in the green as well. By the way, one more penalty, and Southern will be back and uh, trying to defend the French Quarter here in a minute. As <laughs> they're back in the end zone at their back, and the time has been taken here. Tulane huddling to try to set up what could be another scoring guy for them. And Pete Richardson continuing to talk to the officials. Seven penalties for 47 yards, three of them coming on this drive alone yeah. for Southern. Yeah, and that, that's totally uncharacteristic of a Pete Richardson coach team. One of the things they pride themselves in is on being disciplined. Right now, they're not playing as a disciplined team mentally. By the way, the only other conference game going into the SWAC is Grambling playing against Prairie View in Dallas. And the game's going in the Conference USA. Louisville leading at home in the third, 24-7 over Memphis. Later tonight, UAB and Southern Mississippi, TCU and Houston. Both those teams will be once again tonight. Let's head back downstairs here again is Roe Brown. Roe? Thank you, Sam. It looks like at this point, kind of early in the game, but maybe you're starting to see a little bit of the difference in... 1A and 1AA, and I think that's why the frustration came out. If you remember on that last play, it's really the first play you saw Tulane defensive lineman just push, push, push back, and that's where the frustration from the Jaguars came out on that particular play. That might be a sign, maybe something to look at. Back up to you. Well, certainly Southern's defense is now bending. Are they going to break for the rest of the afternoon? This certainly looks like it would be another touchdown here for Tulane. So if I'm the offense coordinator at Tulane, I'm looking at Ramsey to push it in from the quarterback sneak. But that's the reason he's down there, and I'm way up here, as a matter of fact. <laughs> you all are way, way, way up here. <laughs> By the way, Scrooge did a great job, though, of uh, setting up the booth. And it's always a pleasure to come into the dome. Nice to be here. So here it is. It is a first and goal to go after all the penalties. Defense tries to stack in with about nine in the box. And, uh, well, good call, Mr. Coordinator. Red just pushes it in for a one-yard score. Why hand it off? <laughs> Very easy. Take the snap, follow your center. So as Ramsey pushes it in from one yard away, makes it a 20-7 to game. Now, of course, that two-corn conversion comes in very much into play because now it forces Southern into scoring with this extra point to scoring two full touchdowns. They even uh, tie the game, or they have to go for eight to win somewhere along the way. Very easy. Just all your center, your guard, just make a hole. You don't need a lot. Remember, Ramsey's about 6'4", about 235. He'll get the end zone. And the kick by Mars up and good. Zon Becker, Tully, and Colwell, the down lineman from guard to guard, doing the job as Ramsey pushes it home. Seven minutes before halftime, the wave. 21-7 leaders. After Tulane trots in from 81 yards away to make it a 21-7 score, Marler is kicked off but banged it out of bounds inside the five. So after the 35 comes for Southern's possession here in the second quarter with a 7-0 to go. In the second period, Tulane again starting to show some good depth along the offense and defensive line, which obviously with 85 scholarships compared to 63, there becomes the big difference between Division 1A and 1AA in college football right now. Southern trots on again after the drive of only a minute 35 by Tulane to make it a 21-7 score. Yeah, and you know, but the one thing that Southern's got going for them, they've got the big offensive line, and those guys go about 325, 290, 287 on the front guys, average almost 300 pounds, and they've got to start making some holes, giving Lee a little more time. If he gets time, he can make big plays. Levy out on the shotgun for Southern. Quick little look in past Joe Bayer. Has it and dives ahead to the 41. But Trevion Jovair, one of the outstanding uh, receivers for Southern. Of course, they've lost Michael Hayes for the year. He got hurt in the very first game against Northwestern. Jovair played for the first time last week against Alabama State. Lewis, of course, has tried to step up. Now he's getting double coverage, and they're having to look for another receiver. And after the gain of six, it's a second down and four. 
Washington inside five, excuse me, gain of five. Run, run, run. Inside handoff to Williams. Behind some good blocking to the outside. He's got the down, turns the corner, and is banged out of bounds as he gets inside the 45. Talked about the cutback ability a few moments ago or more. You watch Williams turn on the speed when he turned the corner. Juked inside to the left, look at the outside to the right. A big play for Southern. Quentin Brown on the stop. Time for Tulane after the big game by Williams. 16 yards on the carry by Williams. And the Southern trying something going with 6.23 to go before the halftime break. Very important if you're a Tulane fan to stop Southern on this drive. Take any possible momentum away from them. There's the little fake inside hand out there throwing the up out of the first side. Intercepted. What a grab out of the middle of that time, and it comes to side line to the 30-yard line and it's not on the way up to the 32. Grabbing that one is Darren Sapp. Sapp out of Jacksonville, Florida, just reached out of the blue because it was threaded up the far sideline to Lewis. Sapp just drug it out of the air for an intercept. Man, I tell you what, we talk about it all the time. Football, such a game of vengeance. Watch Levy. Levy's locked in on a receiver right here, but all of a sudden, with the outside hand, Sapp just goes in there, might have some stick him on that hand, grabs it, and takes it back a few yards. You know, a guy that was the fifth defensive back, they've been using him a lot as in the nickel package. This time, Sapp makes the big play. So at their own third-yard line, it'll be two lanes ball on the third turnover of the afternoon by Southern. We've had two lanes to fumble the ball away after a good uh, reception by Lewis early in the game. And Tulane now just trying to run more and others out to just try to use a little of the clock and just keep the momentum going a bit here. Ramsey, we can see that he's an intense football player. At no I don't want people coming off the field. No tearing along, please. Step to the rear of the elevator. <laughs> As we're going up, he says. Comes Ramsey. And off the Moore. Swings outside. Slips one tackle. That's uh, down to the 49-yard line. My, oh, my, oh, my. What a performance we're seeing today by the Weldy Moore. The lead plays are giving Moore the option of reading his, his blocker. He can go inside. He goes outside. Come right at you. Nice block inside at time by Williams. And away he goes. Weldy Moore picks up another 12. Step to That's a pretty good tackler that time. Hartman, one of the top tacklers on this. And uh, Williams just stepped away. Two away from a 100-yard day again. And we're in the first half. Ramsey airs one out to the far side. Sideline going for Williams. Stride for stride, and uh, that was too far for him to hang on to. Defensively coming out for Southern, trying to make that play on the far side. Terrence Arnold's had a very busy day with Williams. And of course, Williams and Williams have been hanging up on the you other side. You gotta be as well. specific when you start talking about Williams now. Say, okay, we're gonna go Elini <laughs> Williams, and then we're gonna go Rodell Williams. There's a lot of yeah, a lot of those. Second down to go at the midfield stripe here for Tulane. A little inside handoff again and we'll try to make something happen up the center of the football field for a little gain. That time Richard is going to kept and carries it inside. Now we're on third down now. As Tulane has been moving this football, don't be surprised, especially since the ball's on the other side of midfield. If it gets to a fourth down, they'll keep it and try to push this down. Tulane smells blood right now. They feel like they got to put another score on the board to take Southern on this game. Ramsey out there by himself. And Richard had carried it for three. Ramsey out of the shot. Down throws ahead. There's Roy Dale again getting the catch up to the 40. And get the spot inside of the 49 for a first down for Tulane. Really impressed with the ability of Ramsey. Ramsey to take the snap, find his receiver, lock in on whoever he's throwing to, and get the ball to him very quickly. Doesn't take a lot of time to go from quarterback to receiver. Let me back up and give credit where credit is. That was Narcisse who has been out with a lower black straight, and that was the first time he'd been in the game and made a nice catch. So now Nick Narcisse making the catch that time late for Tulane, and he gets a first down. One of the fastest guys on his Tulane squad, only a freshman. From Slidell just down the road. Don't take a long turn, you'll be there. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely city, though. <laughs> Lovely city. There's uh, action before the ball can be snapped. Southern now wanting to huddle with their defense quickly here. They say, well, if you're going to do that, it's a timeout. So they run themselves back out. Here's Randy Sims again. You know, he's getting more air time than most all of us are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is. Rowe's going to be very upset he's not on camera as much as Randy Sims is tonight. Right, Rowe? <laughs> Goes Mr. Sims all the way across to talk to Chris Selfo. Yeah, that conversation going on. 
Southern actually, indeed, tried to call a timeout, but they don't have any. Well, I mean, yeah. I was looking at the scoreboard, and it said zeros, and usually when it's zeros, that means none. So I don't know what they were trying to do unless they get called and they're going to be penalized. But I think that it, this could actually be a... A clock problem getting the down line set. I think that's what it was. It needed to get the marker set. So it's a first down and ten. Well, harm no foul, I guess. Ramsey will duck in her center here, and he runs out of that stacked eye again. There's Moore, slants to the outside. Literally just kind of weaving his way through traffic on our side, but only getting a hole is going to be uh, Shannon Smith, number 51, to make the stop. I think that's more with that carry. I believe that put him over 100 yards, you know. And again, you know, very lucky that time Southern because they caught him in a run blitz. That time one Smith not making that tackle. It was six points for more. They had 100 plus touchdowns. Well, that was his 13 carry, making number 14 and 104. And tack on about three or four more as he gets it near the 30-yard line. And Pete Richards has got to be very disappointed with the execution, but also his defense right now because he talked about ad nauseum the fact that we've got to stop the run, make them throw the ball. Our corners, our safeties can do a good job. Again, Moore has done a great job in the first half. This Southern team was only giving up about 23 yards, you know, or a carry in a ball game coming in today. Wide receivers, trips to the left side, the wide side as you look at it. Lone receiver to the left side. We that's Wendell Williams to hand it off, looking to Moore. Moore does have to begin. What a nice little summary there from the far side. And comes up to make the tack. Arthur Smith making the stop that time for Southern. Just literally yanked his legs out from Murray that time. Richardson again uh, up a few moments ago. Probably as much at his club to start with, and then all of a sudden wanted a little bit of reciprocity there going the other side of Tulane. Uh, that means balancing it out, probably so. We want to get this an equal time, you know, reciprocity. Where'd you get that from? That's the that Texas Tech education right. coming out right there. Ramsey's going to have to scramble to try to get away from defenders by Southern as they plastered it in on top of him and make a good to charge to try to knock him down. Man leading the charge that night, number 90, Alex Coleman. Oh, number 90 getting there, a red shirt junior from Zachary, Louisiana. Pressure, keep it, making sure that they haven't done this a lot. Ramsey's got to roll out. You see a push right there. Coleman comes in, gets a hand on and puts him down. A big third down play. Call that the Bear Paul. They put him down that one. Third down, loss of three and a half on the play. Right out of the shotgun, throwing right up over the middle, trying to get it to Williams. Little bump by Williams and his defender, in that case, was Arnold. And Williams trying to split the defense. It was a little too far. Ramsey really took a shot. Chris Cooper came out of no place and really leveled Ramsey. Ramsey's going to feel that one for a few moments. So they're going to try for a field goal here. And the way Marler can kick the ball, I wouldn't be amazed that he could do it. 53 earlier this year, the magic lane record. I thought he would back in 84 against Kentucky. This will be a 50-yard try. I was watching him in Priest and was before the ball game. He was nailed 55, 57 yards. He'll make this. Well, he's got to win at his back. Folks, here it is. The kick is up. It's going to be just there. He made it just over the cross. I'm telling you, the oh, guy oh, got a leg oh, on him. 50-yard kick. Marler puts it in for three more for Tulane. And if this ball doesn't have two more feet of carry, it's not good. Marler beat Richardson, the coach of Southern, and a lot of their players on our sideline, and they didn't want free against them, but they had to fought a great effort by a great kicker, and they've got two good ones here at Tulane. Marler, what a leg he's got on in. 53 and 50 yards this year now. All of his kicks last week against Central Florida were over 45 yards to help them in that effort to try to get their first win, which they fell short by seven points. Wow. <laughs> if you've got a good kicking game and a good defense, you can win football games. Another key stat that's coming out right now is the fact that Southern defense was on the field for over four minutes that time. We had a lot of stoppage, I recognize, but they had to work about they had to work about four minutes there uh, on the field, and that's uh, going to be very tiring. Let's take a look at that again. No doubt about the accuracy; it's right at you. And it's right in the living room, and watch out. Close, it comes over the bar. We'll have another look to show you. It's, close it's, it's over. I should have caught that down there. What are you doing down there? You need to pay attention. Catch the ball. Watch this. Low snap. Good handle. Watch it. To see the lean. Boom. Just gets a little backspin on it when he hit like your lob shot. <laughs> by the way, good job by Roussel, the kicker, to get that low snap up and on the tee, or on the turf as it is. 
for Marler to get that one up and through. The yards, and he'll be kicking off. Not a bad day indeed with three field goals, 25, 44, and 50. Well, with that progression, I'm going <laughs> to okay. go up. Until 60. We may be in for college football three today. This is going to be a short kick. Still going to come deep enough, but he's fielded by, I believe it's Munger. He'll try to carry it up to the 20-yard line. Does as he carries it upfield, and it's going to be a first down and 10. It is Mr. Mike carries it out. They'll have first and 10 at the 23. Sam, you still get the feeling, at least I do, that, that Southern can score some points against this Tulane team. I mean, remember, this is a team that's averaging over 51 points a game, giving up. I think Southern's got, you know, we say it all the time, no turnovers, calm down, no mistakes. This is a very, this is the most important drive of the ball game right now. Going to have under two minutes, Southern's got to get something positive. Tulane will get that little zone now as much as they can on the fence as far as they got it all spread out. But you know those four down line when they have nothing but just a green light to get after it. And on the handoff to Williams, they'll get him back for a loss of about two and a half to three yards. So again, those down line are doing what they want to do as LeMoyne was the man that made that stop. LeMoyne, one of those guys been in and out on that defensive line for Tulane. Well, he's been successful for him running on first down that time. LeMoyne did a good job smelling it out. A long second down. They'll give him only a lot of a yard in the play, so it's second down and 11. Lock rolling at 123 left to go, and look at it. Somebody thought somebody moved along the way. A lot of pointing out there. Yeah, you did it. No, you did it. <laughs> what are you doing over here? Is hey, Ashton was already in the backfield that time, and now Southern University's uh, Larry R. Harrell saying, no, here's him. And Randy Sims backs that uh, indication up. So that's a five-yard gain for Southern. Makes it a second down and six. As they got a second down and 11 after the loss. Finley's really mounting up here against certainly Southern. Run, run, run. And off as they try to whistle him out to the 29-yard line. And they do as Jeremy Williams finding it a little tougher to gain that yardage than he did last year. He gained 120 yards rushing against Alabama State with a one touchdown. Uh, many of the games for Southern played in the slop rain. Yeah. And uh, even though it was a little drier last week, he's fighting this week, even though this wonderfully dry turf, but the Super Dome's still tough because the defense knows what to expect now. Levy out of the shotgun, third down. Swings it outside. And down, they have enough for the first down as they push it out beyond the stakes, and that's going to get to Plain again, Kentrell Plain. Makes the catch on the wing. Young man from Baton Rouge, 6'1", 185, and a senior. You know, these seniors must be taking uh, this very, very important because they, they've dreamed of doing this. Now seniors, they're finally getting to play in the dome against a Division I team in Tulane, a team that I'm sure they probably know as much about as anybody in the country. Yeah, as you mentioned, about 28, got 29 guys from uh, New Orleans area, Southern team, and Southern's a lot of guys in the plate tonight at LSU and transfers. So they understand what it's like about playing a game like this. Great catch again by Joe Bear at that time. He'd be just threaded in. Only 11 seconds, however, left to go before that time. Clock is stopped as they'll set it at the 49. Well, it'll be all kinds of deep drops this time. All of the linebackers, two that are in the game for Tulane. Nickel backs are all going back. Levy back with only three sets. That's play and a half. It's a Hail Mary to the far sideline. And it's going to be out of bounds incomplete, and that's the half. So Lewis was down there as the intended receiver, but he had a lot of company back that way. As Tulane to the field, the closest man was Quentin Brown and knocked away. And it's Levy and Southern heads to the sideline. Tulane heads that way as well. The green wave fell down. The score of 7 of 6 with Ward back now for a 24 to 7 halftime lead. Back at this message. For the second half of the Big Easy Classic as the green wave of Tulane with a 24 to 7 lead over the Jaguars of Southern. Sam Smith along with Stan Luter back here at halftime. And Stan, of course, a big first half for Tulane and a capitalize on Southern turnovers and a bad thing for Southern here. Yeah, penalties and turnovers have been a factor for Southern. I think you got to give Tulane credit. They've taken advantage of every opportunity. But I think Southern's very really disappointed that the mistakes they've made, they think they can play a better football game. Let's take a look at our Ford highlights. And indeed, it was Southern taking a 7 to 6 lead as lead. 
Levy really engineered a nice drive for this. Yeah, Terrence Levy's done a good job when he's had time. Picks this pass to Williams. Williams makes a great catch. Very easy taking it to the house for the touchdown. And Southern's back in the game. Matter of fact, they take the lead 7-6. But I really like Patrick Ramsey. Here's one of the three passes Rodale Williams caught. He takes it to the house 50 yards. Nobody touches it. Rodale going in there. Says, yeah, that's mine. And then Ramsey at the end of the half. Quarterback sneak one yard. Touchdown. And, and Southern's got a better job of defending. But you cannot stop the open offense of two lanes. Sam. Let's take a look at our stats of the first half of the game. Brought to you by Reebok. And, of course, you see the numbers by Southern. Not uh, anything all that bad with 241, 238 for Tulane. Of course, the uh, 50 of the 40, 143 in the air came on a touchdown strike from Ramsey Williams. But the big uh, secret, of course, the turnovers, 3-0 Southern as they turn it over here in their first half game. The points off those turnovers turned out to be nine points uh, on the board for Tulane off the turnovers by Southern on the Reebok stat sheet of the first half. Well, it'll be Sanchez will be one back along with uh, L. Page. will be the two deep receivers here for Tulane. As Villagrana gets ready to kick off for Southern, who has to give up the football first here, Stan, in the third period. And the fact that that is a momentum-type thing for Tulane heading for the 24-7 lead. This is the first time all season that Tulane has been ahead or even tied at half. They've always had a deficit, so they're going to see how they can play from ahead. Tulane, uh, Southern, on the other hand, they've never been behind in the three football games they played this season, Sam, at the half. They've either tied or ahead by 10 or 12. Let's see what they're made out of, both teams. Francisco, Villagrana. Grano gets it all the way down the Phoenix run, gets it to the goal line where it's brought right back up and still some pushing and shoving on as L. Page carries it ahead for Tulane. And Southern making the stop. Man off the bottom of the pile there, number 56, that's Kendrick Paul, a sophomore from right here in New Orleans. So it brings out to Patrick Ramsey. Ramsey with a nice first half. Uh, of course, hitting a 50-yard touchdown pass. He completed 9 of 18 for 143 and a touchdown. And uh, was on the minus side, obviously, on the rushing as he was a total of two times. A really super ball game other than that run early intercept play. Pulling falls. Quick pitch going back to Moore. Southern easily reads the pitch that time and knocks him down for no gain. And Mangum coming in. Mangum has not played much in this game for them, but does come up to make that stop. Sam, you find out a lot about the team's hard now when you go in and half behind, but you also find out what adjustments the coaches are going to make. One thing I think they're going to talk to their guys about, not being so aggressive, play smart, stay home, make your reach, and tackle better. They've missed several opportunities to make big plays on that. They hand off as they swing it to the outside. It's going to be a completion for about five yards. As they swing it out to the near side, getting in the hands of Carl Davis. They catch right out in front of uh, Jakari Williams out of Vallejo, California number 21 and a free safety for Southern. Got to keep defenders, got to keep those guys in front of you. We did a good job not letting Davis get behind him and turn the corner and go deep. By the way, Jakar, he's a normal quarterback, but the, because of the great play they had on the corner, they switched him to free safety. As he that little look in pass again, and they get it out. Swing it ahead comes Tulane, and they get this to Narcisse. Making it was not expected to see a lot of action in this game tonight with that lower back. He's made two big catches today and does uh, certainly show some pain as he comes to the sideline after the catch. Really quick play, a three-step drop, just drop it over the backers and let him do the rest. Again, a missed tackle, and Narcisse takes it up for the first down. Hustle Ward here on the Easy Classic goes to the chain crew because they've got to get it down early. Here's Ramsey. They go nowhere as he's up for a big loss defensively here for Southern. And off the bottom of the stack as they roll out of there, led by time, Jabari Green. Early in the football game, Southern was able to put some pressure on Ramsey. They haven't been able to do quite as much. This time, a good job by Green. Get it in here. You're going to see three, four, five defenders coming at Ramsey. Ramsey steps at the time, takes the hit. Good play by Southern. By the way, it indicated a couple of sacks on uh, Ramsey. By the way, it was the fifth of the game, so they had four earlier. Maybe uh, three earlier in the first half. Three and a half now. Second down. Was a five, second and 15 for Tulane. So playing the five down line as they run it off the corners. And a quick little look into Narcisse. That one too long to get a hold of it as that time coverage by Chris may have obscured the vision of Narcisse on that quick look pass by Ramsey. And late in the first half, every time they were in a third down situation, Tulane was able to convert. This is a big third down possession as far as momentum. You're in a third down 15 situation. I wonder if Southern's going to come with a blitz package. 
not done well on the third work down the conversions in this game. Only about 28 for the season as they go down. And getting a hold of it is Terrell Harris, who made a miraculous catch. Just kind of grabbing that out of the air. Now we'll move that to James Dunn. Excuse me, Harris, but Dunn. Dunn makes a great catch just out of the effort's reach of the river. You've got time to find the field. Survey it right over the middle, coming right at you. Great catch. I got, I needed 15. Let me get 16. Let me go down. First down. Greenway leading at 12. 28 left to go in the third. 24 seconds scores. Ramsey rolls right. Throws that little post. Trying to get it out that time. Great. On the wing, trying to throw it deep. And just out of the intended receiver's hand that time, Davis. Great. It's one thing that both these clubs have had trouble with in the fact that they have had several injuries and most of them have come a lot of them at the receiver core. Well, both teams have a lot of receivers and they have a lot of DBs. And as you mentioned earlier, a lot of the guys, especially on team with wide receivers, DBs, coming out of high school, so they're able to change. You want to see some of your top line players go down. Four. And it took the line of scrimmage. Slants to the outside for two. Second down, and they'll need... Maybe a little longer than the eight yards for the first down. As that time well smelled out, Jerry Green, the first to reach him there for Southern. Southern, of course, was Michael Hayes has applied for a medical redshirt. The fact that he was injured after making only three catches in the first game of the year against Northwestern, it would be kind of a tragedy for him and not to get another opportunity if indeed he played inside the rules for a medical redshirt. Tremendous athlete. You hate to see him go down, but boy, if he can come back next year, that really helps Southern's off. Here's Ramsey throwing in the corner of the end zone. No, he's out of bounds. Well, I tell you, they're working those corners. That time, Roy Dale Williams was on a fly up the near sideline. We've called Roy Dale Williams' name several times in this football game. Ramsey, strong arm off the back foot. Roy Dale, if you catch it, this out of bounds anyway. But what a throw right on the money. Kevin Moffitt couldn't do anything. But just hope to pray. Got to turn around, Kevin. Good pass. Roy Dale, concentration doesn't quite get there. But a big-time pass by Ramsey. Well, it's putt time now, and Roussel will come on for play. He'll hit this one just in the Southern Territory. And he will boom that one. That'll be well out of the back side of the end zone. So run out to the 20-yard line, a 30-yard time. Well, not even that far because the line of scrimmage was there to the 35. And quite obviously, Roussel wanting to get a little more height than what I think. <laughs> and the uh, special teams coach saying, you know, if you could just kick it just a little higher. And not quite so long in that good arm. Uh, good game, by the way. Richardson again and is getting ready to go back to the attack. As they trail it, 24-7 here with 11.30 left to go in the third period. Delane, by the way, failing to capitalize in the third down department. And, of course, three of nine in the first half. They were a little better in the second, but fighting on the last one before they had to take it away. And now Levy brings his club back down out of the shot. And here's his number. Interesting enough, both 143 yards passing in the first half. The outside Levy making a lot of punishment does this quarterback. He sprints it outside, knocked out of bounds rather unceremoniously, my dad. And the first man to reach him is Darren Sapp, who had one of the intercepts here tonight. Terrence Levy's put up some nice numbers on the ground as well, being able to run football. He's got some athleticism, takes that ball that time, gets nicely hit. You don't want your quarterback taking second and third hits, but Levy's a tough kid at about 195, 200 pounds. He can take it. Eight carries for 58 yards of the run now by Levy. Which is second down. And four yards out of the shotgun. Give it to Williams. Williams at the 25. Does not reach the line of scrimmage. He is nailed, and Neville, that middle linebacker who's played a whale of a game, makes the stop for Tulane. Southern's got to think not only points, but first downs. If they don't convert on this third down, that's too soon for to give the football back to Tulane. We saw it midway in the second quarter when Tulane was able to start knocking those guys back three or four yards. The fatigue fact came in. Big, important play for Southern University to keep this drive alive. You know, it's interesting that Mitchell, their free safety, was listed as their number one tackle. We have not called him on a tackle all day, which means the guys up front for Tulane are doing their job. Certainly are. And Neville, the middle linebacker, certainly yielding work as they swing it out to lane, and there is no place to go. He's down at the 24-yard line. And you love to see as if you're the defensive quarter, coordinator. Talk much? Pete McGinn is for, for Tulane. Four or five green shirts surrounding the receiver playing. Guys coming up, making the play, shedding blockers. What's this? One, two. There's one, two, three. You see who's at the bottom of that pile right now? Guess who? Guess who? Mr. Neville. Mr. Neville. What if he's played to Aaron Neville? Well, he, I don't know if he sings very well or not, but <laughs> two and six for third down conversions as there's 
Denzel Page splits it. He's got the part of the beat. He steps him over once. Finally goes up the sideline. It is in for touchdown. What a run by L. Page. And he dives into the stands and gets knocked down by his own teammate. As this is over, give him a chance, but what a play by L. Page. Southern, everybody in the field they had him, but they didn't. So a return for the TD by L. Page. Linares takes it in. Linares, out of New Orleans, Carver High School. Runs that one home as a 37-yard kick, but a 63-yard return for the TD. Wow. Linares L. Page was on the all-rookie team of Conference USA last year. A local product, tremendous speed, came in as a wide receiver, can play quarterback, plays defense, runs kicks, runs four kicks last week for over 145 yards. This time takes it right to the house. Marler with a automatic for him as he puts this one up and good. He's gone 16 of 16 on scoring uh, PATs this year. Yeah. Out kick coverage, and you just take it. There is nothing else to do. Linares L. Page takes it in for six. So Tulane builds lead to 31 to 7 in the third. A change call from Coach Selfo. He hasn't been able to smile much this year. It's club 0 4. Now Tulane leading 31 to 7, kicking off to 7. Here comes Landry. Landry looked like he had a little run. Look out. He sprints to the outside. Kids got some great speed. Marler will be the man to get an angle of him and all the way down to the 31-yard line. Goes Landry to get some, a little bit of momentum back here. What a run. I think he was going to be totally trapped around the 25 or 30, but Ezra does the rest on his own. What the Southern fans have been waiting for all afternoon. Ezra Landry said, anything you can do, Mr. L. Page, I can do better. He said, oh, needs one more block. He runs out of room. Great convey by the time the Tulane team. Almost had a face with there, but Southern's back in business. Uh, Tulane, it was Darvell Bracey that saved that. As Pete Richardson's club goes first and 10. And they started him out of bounds at the 33. In Tulane territory, handoff to Williams, it's on the ground. He tumbles back on top of it for the fumble recovery. By the way, Lenny Van Gelder, our stat man, has come to the occasion again. That, by the way, a punt return for a touchdown. The first since 1988 for Tulane. Mitchell Price did that against UT Chattanooga. For the first time, they've had a punt return for a touchdown. And Mr. L. Page does it here. Then he's faster than I am. I'm researching and he's already got it. Where'd you get that from? <laughs> you beat me to the punt. Lady back to throw for seven. Wilson tries to get away from one, two players. Now he's going to try to make something out of it, and does. He gained a couple of yards. Well, actually about five. He'll get it down to the 30 after they lost a yard, so make it four. But it'll bring up a third down play here for Southern. Had a great run back on the kick by Landry. Very dangerous with your arm as well as your leg. What a hard way to pick up five yards. Every way left, right, dodging tacklers. And then watch this hit right here. Looks dangerous with that left leg up. But Levy's a tough kid. He's back up, ready to go. L. Page, the man that finally finished him at the end. You can see Levy huffing and puffing. He waits for a call. Again, they too work out of a no-huddle offense. Under eight minutes to go here in the third. Levy out of the shotgun. We'll wind this all the way down to the end of the play clock. Low snap, but he feels it. Throws a big bullet to the outside. Step out of bounds, and as Lewis makes that catch, and what an arm by Levy. He threw that one on a string, and it's a first down for Southern, and a chance to keep this drive alive. On the touchdown pass in the first quarter to Williams, we saw the ability to float one, then put it right where he needed it. This time, as you said, Sam, a dart to Lewis. Lewis comes back, catches it, gets the first down, and then tries to get up field for more yardage. Southern's got to get a touchdown on the board this possession. Levy again out of the shotgun. Williams, the low lane back, back there with him. Nickel back is in as Levy. Works out of the shot, throws a little flare to the corner of the zone, trying to get to Lewis. Oh, nice little jump over the fence. And Lewis is out of here. Now, does he have to pay to get back in when you go out there? You need a pass? Well, he certainly is not going to go to I-10 anymore. I'll no, no, in. no, uh, no. We'll do I-10. That's going to be a little crowded. Eh? Great. Uh, i tell you what, the track coach says, hmm, I ain't a hurdler. Yeah. I just found one there. Lewis, four reception for 47 yards today. Again, Levy has found him as one of his favorite receivers. 14 of 24 for Levy, a buck 56. And a touchdown. And they work it down to the five-yard line. I like it. Call. Follow the play. And as Tulane, if they do. So Tulane comes up with another big mistake made by Southern. 
as Levy had made the play down to the five. And then the ball goes spreading loose and it is recovered by Tulane. And Pete Richardson can't believe it. Four turnovers today. Two fumbles and two interceptions. And of course, a 63 yard punt return for a down. As his Jaguars behind the eight ball, 31 7 in the third. Moore again. Well, the Moore carries it all the way out as Levy tried to make something happen for Southern, but Fontenot had another idea of what he wanted to do as he knocks it away from him. You see Levy get away from one defender, and Fontenot's just trying to make the play. He's trying to make the tackle. He comes in there and strips him of the ball. That's why you strip a guy, knocks it out. Levy's got to protect it a little bit better, and Adrian Mitchell comes up with the recovery. And two lanes back in business. Fontenot had a big game. And Terry Fontenot also recovered the fumble as they pitch it out this time, and yes, Guess what? They finally threw one to the tight end. And they finally get one ahead. And the tight end in this particular play is Bobby Hoover. Hoover is one of the true freshmen that is starting at again. 6'4", 240 out of Katy, Texas. Played at Hunter High School there. And it's a second down. They gain a six on the play. A guy that has tremendous potential as he plays. And but really didn't expect him to play this season. One of the return to him, as you said, a, a true freshman. But a kid's got big-time talent at 240 pounds. It's a handoff to Moore. They'll get that uh, first down, possibly. Depends on where the spot is. It could be close. The name of the game for Tulane right now with a 31-7 lead with 6.26 left to go is just to keep the drive going and use as much time as possible, keeping Southern on field defensively as they have for a long time today. Again, they finally get a change move. By the way, I had word from the locker room that one of the changemen has lost seven pounds already. Long pass ahead going to Williams, well over his head as Arnold was back there defending. If he's going to lose, I need to go down there yeah. right at the end of the quarter and start moving chains. They, they're, they're not just running that. They are sprinting it up and down the <laughs> sidelines, I'm telling you. <laughs> as much as we hate yesterday, we need to go down there. Yeah, right. The chain gang die. Yeah. Don't, don't mention fried catchers <laughs> to me again, please. You like that, didn't you? Ramsey, who has continued to set the current uh, passing record of 26 consecutive games for the least one. Touchdown. Back to throw again, but instead ends off and is no place to run this time as that inside defense just closes it down for Southern. And the first man that got into him was Shane Smith. Young redshirt senior out of New Orleans is having himself a nice defensive game inside for the Jaguars. It's always nice to come back and play before the hometown fans. You hope you didn't come in trailing 31 to 7. Nonetheless, it's nice to continue to give your effort, and he does. <laughs> Third down play, they'll need 14. Trips to the wide side right of Ramsey. Inside little pitch to Moore. He's got some running room, and he'll be hit from behind at the 40. Comes forward to the 42-yard line. Boy, that play had big uh, uh, things all over because it looked like there was a wide open field on the far side, but it closed down with Southern and in a hurry. Wondering when they would maybe even try to attempt that. You send your three wide outs deep and just see if you can toss the little Utah pass, little shovel pass right there. The more, more kind of bumps into one of his offensive lines, slows him down enough that the Southern guys can come up and get good pursuit. But a play good enough to pick up about eight yards, Sam. Well, Southern's going to try to come back to this. Roussel will hit this outside his own 30. Larry back is the long, deep man here for Southern. Oh, that's a short snap. And it's got a man in the open field. Moore cuts the outside. Will he go all the way? He is tripped up, dives ahead down to the three. Back at the six-yard line. Chris Self to the short man. <laughs> Chris Selfo said, he said, we can be very excited. We can be a lot of fun to watch. He said, so we give up a lot of points. Well, they haven't given up a lot of points today. A fake punt, 51 yards later, they're back in business again, trying to put some numbers Numbers up today to Green Wave. Ah, ah. I, oh my, again, just a short snap. It has to be perfectly executed, and it was in that particular case. And Moore slipping a tackle after tackle and finally being caught from behind and tumbled down. Last man to catch him, Randy Williams. And a good job by the offensive line. Did you see how they just parted and gave him so much room to run? Then, you know, Sam, you and I, with all the food we ate yesterday, could have got that first down to take it right down the field. Now you're stretching it. Well, yeah. we could have. Yeah, I mean, we ate a lot of <laughs> 4.40 left to go. Time out taken here by Southern. As Pete Richards looking at that scoreboard with the time winding in the third and again a short snap to the short back and a 51 yard run and a first and goal to go they rule the knee down at the seven by the way for first and goal here by the green wave 
And Tulane very much in the opportunity to get the uh, first win of the year after going 0-4. By, by the way, Moore, 179-yard rushing. Yes, that does count. 53 yards receiving, 232 all-purpose yards today for Mueldy Moore. I don't think we need to count the ballots. Not, a, not enough of them have dimples, I guess, because they are <laughs> official here today, ladies <laughs> They are official. The thing about where is that uh, in the first game of the football season this year in the, in the Black Coaches Association Classic against BYU, the first possession of the ball game, he takes it to 75 yards, hadn't had the big long run throughout the remainder of this season. The days really come out. They've done a great job isolating him, giving him a chance to run off his blocks, and more is, is the back that everybody talked about as the preseason uh, all-conference candidate and rookie of the year last year in Conference USA. Coleman and Moore stacked in behind Ramsey. They have first and goal with the seven. Patrick, Patrick Ramsey has had some uh, he's coverage up front as far as his lineman is concerned. He has had five sacks though. This time he throws to the end zone and the receiver Williams had turned out momentarily and then when he turned back in, pass was out of his reach. And that's going to be Williams, Lenny Williams, diving to try to make the Try to catch it there. Williams says, no, I'm okay. Ramsey comes out. That's it. Couple steps. Low pressure. See the happy that time. Throws off his back foot. Boy, he got away with one that time. Very lucky that wasn't intercepted by one of the Williams. Probably could have thrown that one up about the fourth row. Yeah. Everybody would have been happy. There you see the numbers on Ramsey with 198. Hand off for it. From behind the outside line. As it stunned to the outside and double back to make that uh, tackle. And a Blatcher. Blatcher, the young man, first on top of him, Richard Sr., 6'3", 275, number 96, from behind for the tackle. And he now faced with a three down and goal. They know they got that automatic three points. I should definitely want to get some more points on board here. Tulane again and giving up 51.2 points a game. I mean, in today's contest. Well, Southern, a reasonably good double-A offensive team to only seven. Ramsey, one of the end zone. Catch is made by Davis for a touchdown. My oh my, what a catch that time by Carl Davis. There was only one thing that could happen to that ball, actually two with the inter with the incompletion, but the only other one, no way to be intercepted. It was a catch. If it doesn't hit the turf, early he the, just catches it nicely. Early in this ball game, we saw Ramsey kind of roll out half roll. He's trying to buy time. There's a kid. Oh! Wait Ooh, Mr. Davis, he thought he had his first touch. I'm going to give it to him, but I would like another oh. recount on that. Whoa! Southern is uh, taking a bullet on that one. That was definitely an incompletion. And the kick is up and good. Bonner, we have a timeout on the field. So is Chris Selfo and Tulane's Green Wave enjoy the 38 to 7 lead over Southern. We pause here in the third from New Orleans. 7 lead right now in the third period. They had started today's game 0 and 4. First time they'd started that way since 1991. Lost their first nine in a row. Finished at 1 and 10 over Navy. Under eight years, they've had only five winless seasons, though, at Tulane. But today it looks like they'll be very in uh, opportunity to get the first win. It's back it goes on the kick. some more space on the sideline and steps in to the 43 and there is a flag back up field we believe as referee Randy Sims says wait a minute the flag is thrown apparently back in the southern uh, area and they'll bring this one back I believe back on a potential uh, infraction in southern Coach Self looking on again his brother Fred I think, excuse me is the offense coordinator here at Tulane. And their offense has been, uh, as it has been for most of the year, very potent. But their defense has been like a sponge. Well, they've, been able, yeah, they've been able to put up the points of, in football games all season. I think 14 is the first they had against um, LSU, excuse me, 17. But they've been able to put numbers up. Legal it's block stopping. Along the way on the kicking team, 15 yard penalty. First down. You'll usually see that. First down for Southern. Let's take it downstairs. Once again, here's Roe Brown. Roe? You know that catch, touchdown catch by Carl Davis just now, which was, well, as we saw, really wasn't a touchdown catch. Take it back to last week. Last week, Chris Selfo thought they had a touchdown taken away. Roy Dale Williams on a fade and with a touchdown catch that would have tied the game against Central Florida, but it was rude. No catch. Replay showed it was. So I guess he thinks Chris Selfo does at this point. It's poetic justice. Back to you guys in the booth. Roy, I think they call it 1-1 is what they call that. 30. 38 
to seven. The lead right now is Southern. It's a possession of the ball in Tulane territory at the 33, and there's Levy retreating the throw. He's throwing deep to the corner of the end zone, trying to get it out to Lewis. As he cannot make that plane, excuse me, he and Sanchez having a foot raised the corner, but it's too far for either to have a chance to catch. Those two guys have battled all afternoon. That time, just Levy just put a little too much air on Sanchez, was able to bump him, slow him down a bit. Wow. One thing the Jags have been excited about right there, Mr. Jag throws Mr. Pelican. What's the Mr. Green wave? I guess they call him Greeny. Threw him down. You know, a great, great story out of the swack is the Jaguar and the Tiger of Jackson State literally got a fight going yeah, on one yeah. time. <laughs> it was weird. Levy swings it. Left side leaves out of the backfield. That's what they scored their only touchdown of the day. They get it down to the 30-yard line. Plenty of time for them to at least get some points on the board with 3.22 left to go in the third. And a 38-7 lead by Tulane. Jeremy Williams was one of those guys. You know, we talked about Michael Hayes being out. So nine different receivers throughout the season for Southern Nam taking over the load, catching especially what Lewis has done. But but get Jeremy Williams with a good back running out of the backfield and catching about three receptions today. Three diamond rushing here for Tulane as they spread out in the backfield. Levy is under pressure and is going to be dropped. And Neville was one of the first guys to get to him. And there's that inside linebacker again. That's had himself a whale of a day. That time he got Wesley Heath, the linebacker, number 41, right behind him. See a little stunt right there. They just don't do a good job of holding up Neville. Neville comes in there and gets a little help right there from uh, Wesley Heath. Those two guys, we've called it a lot, making big plays. Neville brings Levy down. Again, to my knowledge, we have not called Mitchell's name as a guy making a tackle. And he's our number one guy. But he's in the safe, deep safety, which is a good sign for the front line to play here for Tulane today. Levy, he's going to have to try to run, sacked again. It's time at the 48-yard line. The defense for Tulane really starting to collapse, and there's Neville. You know, Sam, Pete Richardson made an interesting comment when we talked to him the other day about the size of the offensive line for Southern. Those guys were averaging almost 300 pounds. He said, yeah, we're big, but that doesn't necessarily mean we're quicker. And I think you're seeing some of the speed going in for, for Tulane. Those guys are rushing four, and they're just beating the, two, the uh, Southern guys off the football and making the play, making it very difficult for Olivia right now. Rocky Selwyn may get the sack on that. However, it may be Neville getting a half a sack as well. But nonetheless, for Southern, they're in pack of trouble again back near the midfield strap at the 48. A third down, 27 to go. Underneath. They get the pass underneath, and it's coming ahead to Arm. Right Spence to the outside. All the way down to the 20. Took a weird kind of fall right in the hands of the defender. Thought he might get a hurt. That's Sanchez. Caught him and knocked it down. But what a play as Arm takes it for a first down for Southern. What a play. Again, the explosiveness of this offense, of the racehorse offense of, ja of uh, Southern University. Make the left side screen. You needed 27 yards. They got 27 yards with a great catch. Watch the hit right there. Go down, cut it awkward, but gets back up. Southern, you need a score this time. Last two drives for Southern have started inside the uh, two-lane 42-yard line as back goes Levy for another throw. It is complete down to the 10-yard line. There he goes. He's going to be Jobert. Travion Jobert making the catch here for the Jaguars. Really impressed with the fact that Southern's coming out trying to make some plays. But again, you got to give Tulane a lot of credit. They're not letting them be beat by the big play. And we talked about that in the open. Tulane could not give up big plays. They have not done that today. Well, Page had the big play early in the game for the tour. One coverage to your side against Lewis. The quick tackle on to Levy, and he's going to take it down to the one-yard line. Ball was free again. Lewis was right in behind him to pick it up, but Lee uh, was down on contact and lost sprung loose. You may recall he took it inside the five. Last time we were there, fumbled it away to Tulane. A little hesitation there. Almost faked the option, and it's a quarterback keeper. Go there as a hit. As you can see, as his knee touches, the ball comes out. Got to protect that ball inside the red zone. Got a few points up. Outside linebacker Heath making the stop. They stack the eye. It's Lee handoff. Second back three. Williams to the line. but doesn't make it. And a ball again springs loose. It gets in the end zone. Big scrambles on for it, and it's finally picked up by two. Got to go down. And there's no whistle blown yet. There's Karen Lewis, David Dorsey, and finally out to the five. After Southern again had taken the ball to the goal line, Williams fumbles, and it comes up, and Dorsey comes out of the end zone at the five-yard line with it. My, oh, my, what an afternoon. A problem for Southern on the turnovers. 
five turnovers, three fumbles, and two interceptions today. I wonder if Williams, I will take a look at this and see if Williams break the plane with the football. It's, no, he, no, no, no. It's a good stick time. He bumped the ball, comes out. I think uh, that was uh, Mitchell. We call Mitchell's name then. Ball fumble. Fall on it. Fall on it. Fall on it. Can get it done. Tulane's the business. Dorsey trying to bring it out of that end zone. He had a lot of green ahead of him. It was a potential of a long run. But again, now is with injured player down on the far side for Southern. Number 82 is down. Derek Schellmeyer, a redshirt freshman out of Baton Rouge. They're looking at that uh, left knee. But of course, I always hate to kind of uh, do that. But let's take a look at that play one more time as Williams again got to the goal line but didn't break it before the ball got out. Ball's got to break the play. He does, as you see, it, Mitchell makes a nice dig. The ball's right there. But again, it's a, it's, a, it's a free for all for a few moments. If I'm too late, I'm telling him again, Dorsey, just stay in the end yep. zone. Don't try to run that out. Could have been a safety. Gets it out to about the six yard line. Tulane's got the ball. That's a dangerous play. And now that you've got this game in hand for Tulane, Coach Selfo doesn't want his kids to make mental mistakes. That's the play in a game, a close game, another game down the road. Could end up hurting you. Go down on the football. Again, unaware of uh, exactly why well, I'm sure he knew he was in the end zone. He's kind of going. Well, he's, he's, thinking, he's thinking oh, 100 yards. <laughs> yeah. By the way, we're looking at some of the scores here. Texas A&M is crushing them today. 24-3 and UCLA is over Oregon State today. So some of the top teams playing well. Clemson has a lead over Georgia Tech by a point in the fourth, 27-26 in some of the scores. Look, uh, Florida A&M was pounding the last time I heard Howard. Here again, by the way, South Carolina has defeated Alabama coming from behind, 37-36. That's a final, South Carolina. Wow. North Carolina all over North Carolina State right now. That's a final, 17-9. North Carolina wins again. The heels. Oh, my. Sets up a big battle with the East Carolina. Conference USA is coming to town next week. Come to the hill. <laughs> Get ready. Byron's coming. So as the time winds down here in the third with the Tulane owning the ball, inside their own 10, they've got 38-7 lead heading for the final quarter in two one. This is NBC coverage of major black college sports. Sam Smith along with Stan Luter and Roe Brown. Tulane has the lead by the score of 38-7 as we start this fourth quarter of today's game. with the ball. First hand off. They try to just use some time. Pushing it out to the 15-yard line. Coleman on the carry. Let's take a look at the third quarter steps so far in the game. You see the numbers on the board as some has now accomplished a total of 316 yards total offense. 522 last put up by Tulane against Central Florida. Their defense still a little bit porous in this game tonight, but they're obviously looking well for Tulane on the Reebok stat sheet. All you got to do is circle that third column on that. Turnovers. Five turnovers, 60 points. That's the ball game. By the way, uh, Lenny Van Gelderen gave us a note earlier that Moore has already cracked his rushing record. And now he's got 185 yards rushing. Tied for sixth most in the game at uh, Tulane in the history of the university. 185 yards rushing by Moore today. Yeah, we were talking about yesterday. Tulane's got a long history. They're coming up in their 1,000th game pretty soon. Guess what? He's over 200 as he wow. moves that one out beyond the 30. Carries it all the way out to the 32-yard line. And if it's not scary enough for the Conference USA folks that he's just a sophomore, they say that he's getting better. Little and he's toss. still got a little room to go. Oh, yeah, it's good line blocking. The guys are making room for him. I think Southern's a little fatigued. Toss it and let Moore do his thing. Lenny Williams was the last on the bottom that time for Southern as we're in the fourth. A minute deep. As action going on along the front line. And looks uh, like it's going to be a delay. I think the uh, game clock, the play clock. Whoops. Somebody got started a little early. Still first down. First time we've heard that tonight. So the far side by uh, Ramsey and Tulane. Roll back it up five, first down and 15. They'll roll the clock back into a service. Patrick Ramsey, 26 consecutive games with at least a touchdown throw as he throws another one here today. Goes to his left, big which is on. Oh, he got hit hard as he threw that one out in tip for Narcisse, but really got leveled. And he is getting up rather slowly. Well, he's like a good time, actually. He gets up, he takes a lick, and he keeps on. <laughs> and he has taken a few shots today. How many people wear Timex watches anymore? They all look fancy <laughs> names for them. Watch him again as he rolls to his left. There's that backside coming at him. Boom. 
when Mangum comes in there and says, hey, let me explain something to you. This ball game is not over, and we're still going to keep fighting. Out of the shotgun again, Randy. Going to the far sideline, going to be incomplete, trying to hit the white at that time. James Dunn out of Santa Monica, California, just a sophomore. 5'8", 182 is on a little fly to the corner. Had the coverage, but the pass was overthrown. They're all Southern than this dome, as we pointed out under Coach Richardson, have had uh, very good success. The only time they lost was last year in another one of our television games. Uh-oh. They lost to Jackson State last year here, 13 to 10. Gonna be like the play. Yeah, but I wasn't at that game. Right. So don't, don't play for that. I'm so play for at the 22 yard line they get him as Arnold was the last to get the last bump that knocked him down and Williams has had a great day receiving today I think you remember Adrian Burnett of last year as a favorite target of Ramsey. I tell you what, Williams is now the new main man. Yes, he certainly is. Burnett, they missed. He scored 14 TDs last year. But there's Rodell. He is getting ready. If he didn't turn around and look, just keep running, big fella. Keep running. That's a nice little pitch. Five-yard pass. Boom. And you see what happens. Bill Williams, a great athlete. Only a sophomore. You see the change just getting there. <laughs> oh, Spock was going down there this half. I forgot about that. And Southern now wants to take a timeout to give those guys a chance to give themselves a chance to rest. 48 yards, by the way, on the pass and run. Bro Brown has been our man down on the field. Well, the audio folks, so uh, let's take it down. Bro, you have watched uh, what was anticipated to be the big matchup here, but it's been too late with a lot of people to make this thing happen to them today. No doubt about it. Uh, of course, Moel D. Moore, uh, no doubt about it, the best leader on the field, Moel D. Moore is. And that guy right there, Patrick Ramsey, of course, supplies a lot of the firepower. But thinking back in this game, Stan and Sam, you know, I think when Michael Landry, I was over at the bench, when Michael Landry was tossed out of this game to find defense and from Southern, the entire team of the bench seemed to change. He was over there crying. He was distraught because he lost out of the game. And this, the entire team of the bench just changed at that point when I was over there. Meanwhile, on the right side, it's been a while since they've been able to swagger. Up 38-7, to 7, 14 20 to go. They're doing a little swagger on both sides of the ball, offensively and defensively. But the Southern bench on the other side, there you see him taking the starch out of him and took it out of him pretty early. I think that Michael Landry point in the game was really what did it for the Southern Jaguars. Thanks, Ro. Ro Brown working down on the field. Ro, of course, an outstanding sportscaster here in the New Orleans area for many years and watching probably all of these kids, a majority of them, in their high school day and now watching as they have matriculated to their favorite universities, Tulane and to Southern. And, of course, uh, over 60 players on both sides of the ball here today from the New Orleans area. I miss Michael Landry, but in five turnovers, a lot to do with it. They <laughs> really did. Here's Randy back to throw. This one over the middle again as they get this head to Moore. Moore just keeps adding numbers to his total today. You know, all-purpose yards. Should be right at about uh, you know, 300 all-purpose. Over through over a couple of hundred on the rushing as Shannon Smith makes the stop there for Southern. Clock at 12.59 left to go here in the game from the Superdome. 70 yards receiving now for Moore. 185 on the rush. Swing it out to him. And the yardage on the receiver to Moore. We'll take this down inside the nine. And another first down here for Tulane. With you a note there, of course, Moore had 185, and I think he ripped off a pretty good run there. I thought he was closing in on 200, but they still haven't listed unofficially at 185 on the rush. As again, it is Tulane trying to add some more points to the scoreboard as Davis goes flank to the far left. Dunn is in the slot on the right as they hand it off to Moore. One. Moore pushing that one down to about the six-yard line. Now, Stan, we talk about waning moments in this game. What does this do to Southern? They realize they've stepped up in a division. They realize that the championship is what they really kind of shoot for. And, of course, the big battle here against uh, Grambling in the Bayou Classic. But they've got to step back on their practice field next week. We'll talk about the impact what this game is going to do to them after this game today. Is too late. It's ready to operate here second down. And goal to go. Randy out of the shotgun. Plenty of time to throw to the end zone. In and out and incomplete. The defender over there defending well. The ball was uh, just 
in and out of the hands of the intended receiver that time, and Narcisse was in it, and almost had it in the corner. It's on Southern's reaction out of this game. What it does is, is, is obviously the disappointed, not winning their performance, the turnover, some of the mental mistakes that they've had. But Alabama A&M is on the horizon. That's next Saturday. The SWAC, people are playing the SWAC championship the first week in December. That's the ultimate goal for the Southern University team. Just remember a non-conference football game. You take this, you learn from it, and you say, hey, look, next week, no, almost had a pick there. You got another game next week to learn from and play from. It also may give their guys a little gauge. It could be those attention getters. I don't think it'll be hard to get these guys ready to practice next week. That was Lenny Williams making that deflection. Almost got the intercept as they were throwing for more in the corner. He's on. Williams had his hand on it, but just could not finish it out. He had two picks last week, one for a score against Alabama State for Southern. He loved the effort by Lenny Williams, but if he can keep his feet, he can take that for six. Marler, who has already had a great day kicking today, will add a bitty chip shot here. Go ahead that one up. This will be a 23-yarder. That's like an extra point for him, and it's easily good. So he has a four field goals and a 50-yarder today for Marler, who continues to be the here for Tulane. They lead it 41-7. How much in October the 13th should be a great college football game. The SIAC showdown between Morehouse and Tuskegee, the black uh, college football team of the year last year with a perfect 12-0 record, and they're off undefeated this year. Our pregame show will start at 6.30. The kickoff will be at 7 o'clock Eastern time over many of these same NBC stages. That's a good one as the Tuskegee-Morehouse 66 showdown will come to York from Columbus, Georgia. Here's Landry. Caught and dropped from behind after they kicked it into the end zone. And a nice play by... Jane as they get that one by Quinn Brown to drop the little speaker down, and they'll get him down just outside the 10 at the 13-yard line. Buzzers had a couple of nice returns today. One in particular kind of was at a stage of the game when uh, certainly Southern could have made something happen. But again, those five turnovers, two of them, by the way, fumbles inside the five-yard line of Tulane. It really taken, as we indicated, to steam right at them, along with losing a fine defense Ben and Mr. Landry early in the game. Yeah, I think one of those the returns you're talking about put them in great position. I think they had a turnover right after. So, yeah, you've had, had some good opportunities to do some things. I can look for Tulane to really kind of get to the line of scrimmage because they were going to come uh, blowing in as Williams gets the call. No place to run as down linemen start to flock in on top of him. Marlon Tickles makes the stop there. Junior out of uh, Aston, uh, in Georgia. Also coming in to make the stop. Number five is Spicer. Spicer, we haven't called his name much today. One of the outside linebackers here for Tulane. I've really been impressed, particularly linebacker tackling in the two-lane front line tackle. And not a lot of secondary tackles as Tulane's had to kind of lay on the first four games of the season so far. Levy swings out to the right side, trying to get Woody out of the backfield. Spicer, the linebacker with him, and well out of his reach, incomplete. Well, those linebackers for Tulane, as you mentioned, in the corners of done. We've, we've called the LPG's name a lot of times today, and Neville, and Heath, and, and Jeff Sanchez early in the ball game making a couple of key deflections. And they kind of set the tenor of this football game, actually hit him back. I mean, you know, Southern came in with a game plan. They were going to try to attack and knock them around a little bit, be physical, play fought back, made some plays, took advantage of some turnovers, hit the 41 to 7 ball game. By the way, do you see that final of Oklahoma and Kansas State? 38-37, Oklahoma wins by a point. Bay State was at it by a ton early in the game. Levy swings it out to their side. Trying to get in the open field. At least spun down and not, not much of a game on Williams. As he'll spring it out, it'll be now fourth down and kick time out of the Shot was on end zone here by Southern. You know, Sam, we look at this game, and obviously we can pretty much determine who's going to win it ball game right now. But, you know, Tulane's a very young football team. They have 29 freshmen, 19 sophomores, and 17 juniors, only 15 seniors on their active roster. So this is a team that maybe they're taking some lumps right now in conference, USA, say, non-conference games. But I think in the future, You'll hear the name Tulane Green Wave. Could come back, maybe have another one of those 12-0 seasons again. Well, the timeout is taken on the field with 10-11 left to go as they go to the sideline before this kick is made. By the way, Stan, are you sitting down okay? You, you, you're all right? I'm fine. East I'm Carolina fine. lost today. Ty buddy. Pirates lost. NC State lost. Duke lost. Uh, my more teams are going down. Only team I got left is USC. The Trojans win and lose day, though. We are in point out of the truck by our illustrious Mr. Buckeye himself, Tom Landry. Ohio State wins. Tom Lundy. How many Landry's <laughs> Landry's, Landry's, Williams. That the Buckeyes won today. So Ohio State won. 
Our Lady of the Blind football team is not what it used to be. Up here. <laughs> it's a joke, Tom. It's a joke. And our guy, Michael Fuller's got to be happy. That gum UCLA, look, they're on a roll right now. So, you know, but I won that UCLA-USC deal last year, so I'm still off that. They were good. They were good. Bill Grano will get out of his own end zone here for Southern. As again, they're down with a score 41-7. Then it's on today, 41,319. They cut the 40,000 mark. We're hoping to shoot at. Great job. 41,319 for the first of the Big East. Villagrano towered it. Catch made by FH, and he is promptly right to the turf on good cover by Mark Frederick. Fred knocks him down, so a timeout on the field. 10 0 1 left to go here in the period as the fight is down. And we'll wait and see. Obviously, after the catch was made, there was an infraction there. Either a block illegally by Tulane or, of course, some kind of hole going on on Southern after the kick was made. And that's the discussion going on with our referee, Mr. Randy Sims. Mr. Sims has been quite busy today. Oh, yeah. Early in the first half, he was real busy. We were making mention that Tulane was averaging only 29 yards in penalties. That ball, personal foul, receiving team, 15-yard penalty, first down. Getting a little chippy out there again as the bragging rights for these New Orleans youngsters. And apparently somebody taking advantage of the other, and the retaliation move apparently caught. Well, Pete Richardson, you know, as you take a look at the on the sideline after trying to return that, Pete Richardson knows as we... Pointed out that we uh, would have an opportunity to get back in the conference, and this one he have to put behind him in a hurry. Ain't over yet, though. We'll back to New Orleans in a moment. New Orleans, 41-7, Tulane leading the Big Easy Classic, the first ever between Tulane and Southern. First time Southern has ventured out of the one double-A competition. And Joseph for the pitch. Tulane trying to get some fresh backs and runners in there. And they've done a good job as Jeff Kreb, a young man out of Fort Worth, Texas, getting a lot of opportunities to run. Just a freshman here. Don't use a lot of that uh, play clock here at all as they continue just to run, and run at no huddle. <laughs> of course, was ready to throw it at any minute. Well, it's kind of hard to break old habits. This is what you practice. Try to get the ball finished going, see how long it's going to take. Need to kind of run that thing, get it off about two or three seconds. Let this go. Let this ball game get done. If you run this one down a little bit, but this is uh, one of the rare exceptions for this video quite the for them. Joseph out of the shotgun. Makes the handoff. Joseph with that great switch went into the outside. He's First down, there's a flag down and behind the play. Matt Perry gets the first down. It's there for Tulane. Tulane coming in at 0-4. By the way, Tulane, interesting enough, has had four undefeated years here. Of course, three of those coming way back when in the early 90s, but 1900s. But in 1998, of course, it was uh, Tommy Bowden is Green Wave going undefeated. Tommy, of course, moved on and took the Clemson job and cell phone. Ten yards penalty. Repeat second down. Led the club to the Liberty Bowl championship, beating uh, BYU for 127 in the undefeated year. The last one, 1998, here for Tulane. And what a great quarterback they had then. Sean King, now with Tampa Bay, first NCAA Division I player with 3,000 passing and 500 rushing yards in a single season in the career. Record for pass efficiency at uh, 80. Penalty against Tulane. It's a fumble on the ground. And Tulane may have recovered at the bottom of the stack. It was loose momentarily. You know, they're going to go back, and uh, I'd probably have to go back to the records there to find out. But that uh, catch by Davis in the end zone that was literally not a catch, but a, a uh, missed call by the official. That uh, was kind of like one of those backers, the fight turnovers. A lot of going against Southern here, again, not to discredit the Tulane effort here today. They've run, and well, that ball was on the ground. Oh, no question about it. I mean, you just, there's a great example right there to play. You get a hand in there for Southern, the ball bounces. If it goes one way, you fall on your business. It goes the other way. Tulane retains possession. Tulane's done everything they were supposed to do to go out and win this football game. I know there was a lot of talk here in New Orleans about you know Southern probably being the favorite, and Southern's had a great chance to win it, but i got to give Tulane plays like that, making the effort. They took advantage of the opportunities, and they're putting up the numbers. Well, Davis, by done, that is, made a great dive of it, but he was out of bounds, but a great effort 
by Dunn as it goes incomplete on Joseph's throw. But a nice, nice try for the sideline. He just ran out of real estate here. James Dunn, a sophomore, one of those many sophomores, a great effort there, but you got to get both those pinky toes in bounds. You got one of them there, didn't have it. Ball goes over to the Jaguars. Coach Selfo is appealing to the football gods as he looks at the replay. But here comes Roussel. Averaging 46 yards per kick into the game today. He'll boom this one. He's actually had a couple that he's put uh, in and out of the end zone, which has hurt his average here today. He'll line drive this one. Landry will catch it. Well, he does not catch it. Well, he does catch it with it. And now he's got some company. And little fella takes it out to the 34-yard line. So Ezra Landry takes it out to the 34. Southern will take over there first and 10 with 439 left to go. A 46-yard kick and a four-yard return. Sanchez was down the top four Tulane, and you can see a few more smiles on that sideline. I felt a little tenseness by the two people, not only in the booth, on the field, the coaches, because this was, yes, they're 0-4. They're playing a one double school, and until they got the lead, I'm sure there weren't a lot of smiles going on down there. Well, well the game, again, you know, it's a game on paper that they're supposed to win, but games aren't won on paper. Right. And you need to go out and play. Yeah, they're 0-4. They didn't want to lose the Southern Southern rival. A lot of these kids, the people know each other, yada, yada, yada. And it's a game that they had to win. They won't say it, but they knew they had to win this football game. They certainly come out taking advantage of the situation and done that. Well, if they go to Cincinnati next week for their back to Conference USA game, they'll play TCU in a homecoming game back here on the 13th at UAB. Then they've got the Army and the Navy wrapped around the game here at home against Louisville and finish on November the 17th at on road at, at Southern Mississippi. So it's not out of the realm that they do have four or five games in there that could very be winnable. And of course, getting off to a win here today against them after getting off that 0-4 start for the year for the Green Wave. That Louisville team is a very good pass, happy offense. That'll be an interesting game. And what Southern Miss does every year, always one of the top teams in Conference USA. Holding, on receiving team, penalties decline, first down. So another penalty line here, which will not show on the stat sheet as it takes over the football. They is standing it out. We'll be back home against Alabama A&M. And uh, that'll be a rather interesting situation at Mumford Stadium next week because they're back in the swag and they need some wins there. They're one and zero so far this year after that big win against Alabama State last week. I'll just put it back here for Sam. They're going to make the most of it as they take it straight ahead on a little uh, back draw. That's... Quincy Richards, a quarterback who is a redshirt uh, sophomore. Opelousa, Louisiana, Opelousa, excuse me, Louisiana. And he just catches on the snap and takes it straight ahead. And don't forget, you know, they'll, they'll be back down here at the end of the month, yeah. end of November, to play in the, in the Bayou Classic against Ramblin' Doug Williams Club. Just roll, won a big game up in Portland, Oregon against Portland State on the last play of the ball game last week. Had to go. 30-29 is a foul. 29-29. The extra point is a 35-yarder because excessive celebration. Nailed that. Win the ball game. That's a big win for the SWAC, but more importantly for Doug and his crew. So, you know, that's going to be a big game. You still got to go and play Jackson State. And you know that's always a tough battle. So, tough games ahead for Southern. One of the great classics in uh, historic black college and university. Bio Classic here in November. Here they throw it up the sideline. Oh. And almost picked up an interception. Getting his hands up on the near sideline was Adrian Mitchell. Playing that center fielder role as they were trying to swing it out here on the near side to play. It's a game of almost. You almost threw that long enough. It could have been six. Mitchell almost intercepted it. Good coverage on the play. Lewis actually was the intended receiver. But, again, a play just knocking it out of his reach. Yeah, left that ball up there just a little too low. Loaded. Quincy Richards replacing Levy here in the closing seconds. 3 4 7 left to go in the fourth. Play trying to move to their record of 1 and 4, while Southern will drop to their 2 and 2 as they'll go back to the conference with a well record. But those two games they've lost. lost. False start, offense, five yard penalty, still third down. Lost to this, this team, this lane team. First game of the season losing 321 to Northwestern State. Northwestern State last week beat Conference USA for Tulane Po, TCU overtime. So go figure. And Northwestern State's one of the top 20 teams in 1AA football. So, you know, there's some balance someplace in there. Again, if you play good teams, there's only two things going to happen. You can either win or lose it. This game will help Southern down the road. And Richards, the quarter back out of the shotgun again. It's a third down and ten. Low snap, but plays it. Goes over the middle. Almost one-handed grab that time by Gilbert. He was defended tightly that time by Boulder, who is, of course, the strong safety, but plays very much like linebacker half the time. 
Of course, top teams in the historically black colleges and universities. Of course, Grambling State, number 11, is in the latest of the uh, Sports Network poll. For AM, number 18, and Tennessee, the Tigers, number 25. Uh, Philip Brown gets another big high punt this time. It'll take a good to lay out to this finally going to be knocked down and killed. It's coming down Southern, and uh, Richard Gant finally putting a hand on, knocking it down. It'll belong to Tulane after the kick by Villagrano of 30 yards. And with all the things that have gone on in our country over the last couple of weeks, it's certainly glad to see all the people out today and having a good time and trying to forget. But certainly, just want to say to all the families of everybody, the victims and everyone, you know, our, our prayers and thoughts with you. Hang in there, America. Let's get through this thing. And uh, also want to thank all the people at Southern that have helped us, the SID and the coaches, everybody, and the people at Tulane. It's been really a big help getting us through this week. And God bless America. Yes, indeed. Three 28 left to go here. Actually, a 25-yard kick after it hit and spun back. And it comes back to the 25. We'll spot the football down. And there goes the chain guys again going up and down the sidelines on the far side. I don't know how many pounds they've really lost today. They're tired. I'm going to talk to John Madden and maybe top of him over there. So the new quarterback working for Tulane again. Joseph back in for another series. Test the center of that line to get back to the line of scrimmage, and of course, Southern with a couple of new fresh bodies in there as well. No huddle for Tulane, gets Southern back to the line of scrimmage in a hurry as the clock rolls at 313. You see St. Gear in there, also Paul is checked in for Southern. Some of the new numbers, there's a good look at Joseph as he comes to the line of scrimmage here for Tulane. They clock a, goes at 13. If they want to use some of the time, they're not doing it. As Irvin again goes in. The ball was just again. It was on the ground. And Southern trying to get a hold. Uh, comes up short again. Stop on the bottom of that stack of time is Jonathan St. Cyr. Young man from New Orleans. 15 205 and a sophomore. Yeah, but he and, John, and Joseph Finch, you know, yeah, you know, you want to run his clock. But he's getting his opportunity to play quarterback for the first time in a while. So he wants to try to show the coaching staff of Tulane what he can do, especially in the situation. You're one hit away if you're Rams from going down, you need to make sure that you've got some experience there. But you want to try to extend his clock and get out of this. You don't want anybody to get hurt. That's one thing that Pete Richardson was talking about. You wanted to make sure none of his got dinged up. So they the swat. Looking past that time was in the hands of the intended receiver and then bang way as Chris Bush has hands on it. A pretty good shot from behind. Before this game comes to a close, we'll be taking you back down for the final comments of Roe Brown, who's been with us today. Of course, uh, watching these athletes in high school all the way into college, watching the first ever uh, the Big Easy Classic here today as Tulane will win the first one, but who's to know? They've one more meeting planned, and it could be a staple on the schedule of these schools down the road. Certainly hope so. This is a great ball game for the community, for the state of Louisiana, and especially for these two institutions. So it'll be Roussel kicking all the way. Big rush on by Southern, but he does not hide tiring one out of there. Landry back at his own 35. Still stayed on his feet. Nobody uh, saw his knee go down. Apparently did not. He gets out to about the 40-yard line. A 37-yard kick and a 5-yard return as Southern takes over the football again with a minute 55 left to go. So as we get ready for Southern to come right back once again, some handshakes all around. I think what, uh, if we were naming a simple defensive player here, it'd have to be or to this game. Have to be uh, Daniel Neville, the middle linebacker, number 44, Dwayne. He really kind of spread that defense, and I would imagine was in on nearly a couple of handful of tackles today just by himself. And I think another guy we, we call his name a lot is Sanchez, the yep. cornerback. Been in on a lot of tackles, made some deflections. And El Page, of course, the big kick return and an intercept here today as Southern tries to wedge it out straight with uh, Quincy Richards. Richard freshman running the attack is Lee's been retired to the sideline after this one's over no chance of getting him hurt because they're not uh, real deep as far as the quarterback yeah. concerned in Southern. And actually technically too late they're not that deep. No, neither fact, Joseph, really, yeah really that deep. Joseph had come as a wide receiver as the backup quarterback in the game today. Minute 20 left to go before we finish here. In the game, there's a little shovel pass inside to Williams. Just as he got it, and around the line of scrimmage, he got nailed. And a good play coming up to make the stop. That was Mitchell off the bottom of his hooker. Third down, clock rolls, minute two. So it should be just a couple of plays here on this third down play. 
as Southern will have a third and about 40 here. Out of the shotgun, Richard. He looks to throw and does. Underneath, finally hits it to the tight end who we heard a lot from today. Lionel Joseph, a wide receiver. He's from Indianapolis, Louisiana. A redshirt uh, sophomore makes the catch. They don't throw to the tight end a lot in the, uh, no. in the scheme of things for uh, Southern. I like the uh, the depth chart. It had X, Y, Z, and uh, I, I looked it down. They had 14, uh, 14 possible starters here for Southern. I love that. X, B, Y, Z. There you go. All kinds of receivers. Back for what could be the final play. And it's going to be incomplete. They will not have uh, achieved another first down. It'll be second down, and they'll still need 10, but now 11 seconds. The clock stops again. That time, Davis, the interior receiver on the far side line for Southern. Chris Davis, wide receiver out of Greensboro, or Greenberg, excuse me, in Louisiana. And it could be the last player with a left response. Low snap. Richard back to the looking. A lot of pressure. Finally runs away with the far sideline. Oops. Comes back to the near side. Now, this is a play gets somebody hurt on here. And it could be Richard as he has finally knocked out the game comes to the post. Well, he used up the 11 seconds as he wound that one out. And Tulane will get their first win of the season. Southern drops to two and so as they step out. From 1AA into Division 1A, and Tulane goes to 1-4. And, and, of course, Southern drops to 2-2, two two, but they head back to the SWAT next week in a big game. So they've got some more work to do in the SWAT before they try to get to that SWAT championship. Alabama AM and m coming to Baton Rouge next week. So, a disappointing game, but nonetheless, a game that Southern knew. Eventually, they come in and try to make the mark. They had a 7-6 lead, but after that, it was all Tulane is... Patrick Ramsey and company and the defense really turned up here for Tulane to prove to be the victor today. A score of 41 to 7. A player and more after this timeout. Bobby Randall.